live. We are going live. We are live. Oh my god. Hello, people. Welcome to Dengus. Welcome and enjoy the stream. How's how's it going, people? We got Dark Heavy in the chat. We got Zakao here. Say hello, Zakao. Oh. I heard some fuzz. He's having my issues. <laughs> and we got Tokoso here in the chat. What's up, Tokoso? Good evening, people. How you doing? What up? <clears throat> And, and we got the energy. Luke, and Luke is already <laughs> effing. Like, uh, like Luke, come on. Like, uh, <laughs> give me a couple of minutes yeah, to yeah. die, all right? <laughs> yeah. uh, but how are you guys doing on this fine Saturday in this uh, beautiful galaxy? We are now in 3308. Um, whatever that means. I don't know. It's, uh, <laughs> it's a pretty big... It's a, It's been a pretty big uh, year for Elite. Last year we had... The Odyssey drop, and then the several several updates to fix the mess that they created, which is still yeah. ongoing. But we got a new SRV. <laughs> I mean, that was like that's a that's a that's a first since like the beginning, right? Like, yeah, totally. First time yeah. we got a new SRV since Horizons. Like, that's that that was kind of cool, and I do like the new SRV. But I'm imagining there's going to be a lot more. I hope I hope there's going to be a lot more to come uh, in, in 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 this year. So we don't really know. It's kind of a mystery. Oh wow! Hmm, maybe I should be. We've got the carriers. <laughs> We've got the carriers, and we to walk around, which would be quite cool. Actually. That's true. Might, that, 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 is that, that could be a good spatula set, I reckon. Is, is that the next Somewhere update? Up. Is that, no, I think it's one after this. One, after. one coming this month. No, one in February, which, which could be the carrier, but you know, depends what happens. I did see the previews of that. It was pretty damn neat. Like I think it's cool that we'll yeah. be able to walk around in those. Like, I think that's super much needed. Um, the yeah, I like, the, I like the site. You know, I don't have a fleet carrier myself because I'm a rogue ass commander. <laughs> but, yeah. but hey, you guys have carriers. I'll come on your carrier and walk around. But it looks like That's like you're gonna, you're gonna get like concourse and stuff like that, like little shops and stuff on your carrier. Yeah, I really like the fact they made it a, a big space you could wander around and get a good feel for it. So then, because I've sometimes felt the concourse on the stations are really tiny, so I think. And I know that's pretty yeah. efficient for rendering stuff, but it's like we're in these stations with millions of people, and I go into a bit, and there's like nine of them, something. And it, it's oh, although the thing I did like is if you get a um, apex now, you come out in the apex um, lifts rather than the normal lifts, yeah. and it really gives you you kind of go, oh, where am I? And I, and I like that, and I think they should use that kind of stuff more. That gives you a different angle, the same thing. Yeah, I was doing, some, I was doing the, some. I was doing some taxiing before the stream, and just like, yeah, you come out, you're a little uh, yeah. disoriented because you're like, wait a minute. Yeah, yeah. But that's it's quite nice to break the repetitions. It? It, yeah, it's a nice little touch, and like definitely like you know some of the concourses you go to have different lighting, and you'll notice like different plants and shit. I still would like more yeah. variety, but I'm happy that they are doing something with that. Yeah, yeah, but I, I, think I just quite like the, the carriers that you could just there's, they're like you say it felt like everything's on, along a long corridor, and there's different sections, and that. Yeah. That's you know that's what I wish they could have had when they first did carriers because they seemed so empty. But um, it'd be cool now. I think it'd be really great. And then you can all sit on the car and go for a jump, which will be yes. a, a, a moment. It'd be cool, you know. The thing that really floored me, uh, so to speak, was that sittable chairs are coming to Elite Dangerous. We have spent years and years yeah, yeah. waiting for space yeah. legs, and then as soon as the space yeah, legs yeah. drop, I get excited yeah. over like I can sit down in a chair. Oh my god! Yeah, we're, we're all tired now. Oh my achy legs! So, yeah, got no muscle tone. So in my mind, I'm like, okay, what it's going to be is there'll be a blue circle in front of the chair, and a commander will go into the blue circle and then just warp into the chair. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> instead of a sitting animation, like that's probably how it'll work. But I'm excited to see uh, an animation for people sitting and coming out of chairs, and then maybe. One day they can repurpose that for ship interiors in the proper way, but uh, yeah, I mean in stations and stuff. It'd be great to just be able to sit down. Cause again, for if you're, especially if story making stuff for you, it'd be great to have um, ways of, of doing just, just yeah, just do different stuff and it? it's all good fun. But I'm just Pictures like, hey man, um, ship interiors. We're getting it with fleet carriers. The one thing they didn't show was like there is a bridge. And you can go on yeah. it, and you'll probably be able to see the jump, which in fleet carriers, like, you haven't been able to see yeah. that because you kind of get trapped in the in the hangar. So I'm like, yeah, that yeah, would be yeah. super yeah. cool if you can, like, stand on the bridge with a bunch of buddies as you're jumping. And maybe there's a different effect for fleet carrier jumps because they use the weird yeah. cloud, smoke they, cloud technology. That, <laughs> I don't know, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, I don't, it's, so, it's bit, so different. It's more similar, you know, more similar to how the Thargoids jump as well, I think. I'm not sure. So, uh, it's like the it's like the the what do you what do you call them the not the carriers um, the capital ship 
jumps. Yeah, yeah, they jump. Yeah, combat zone. Like it looks. The it's same the map. earlier form of fleet. Fleet. Uh, it's earlier form of um, front. Oh, God, I can't speak well, tonight. The only <laughs> earlier form of jumping where it wasn't the, the frame shift drive, it was something else, wasn't it? Well, the, the, so um, sure... the rumor has it, and, and, and this is if you go deep into the lore and get like really, you know, sh ah, shifty, oh, yeah, yeah. is that like uh, <laughs> prior to which space drives, like FSDs as we know them today, that a long time ago yeah. there was a different form of drive, and then there was the sort of Thargoid War, um, the secret the -a Thargoid War with, with Galkoffs. Yeah, the Betamax of FSDs, yeah, yeah. right? Or the 8-track <laughs> FSD player. Um, yeah. But that, uh, at some point or whatever, the, um, uh, I guess, INRA or Galcop or something, like, reverse-engineered the Thargoid technology right. and, like, gave it to Sirius right, yeah, or yeah. something. So, like, the FSDs that we use are apparently, potentially, like, like reverse-engineered Thargoid technology, if you want to get into yeah. that sort of stuff. But also, birds aren't real, just so you know. Because all, all the asthma stuff coming up has been saying that we've had we've known about the fuck was like hundreds of years. Yeah. So and have been trying to reverse tech stuff. So yeah, hopefully more well, things will. Well, asthma stuff goes even further into like they've been trying to like genetically modify people to fly like Thargoid scouts. That's yeah, yeah. That's crazy ass shit. Like that is like okay, uh, is. advance that storyline, right? <laughs> Yeah, yeah, totally. Especially in the world of Elite, where we won't give you a new, you know, Olympic controller without it being a limited version. Everything's so meager and small. Suddenly go, we're going to genetically modify you and do this. It's, like, Whoa! Yeah. it's quite a change. <laughs> uh, let me just invite you guys to the group. Uh, and what up, Borg Smash 07? How you doing? Salute. Um, but yeah, so today, <laughs> um, you know, I figured kind of like uh, I was looking around in the Galnets, and there is a current community goal. There's also a bunch of stuff about NMLA stuff. Um, like apparently the the Empire might be connected with NMLA or something oh, yeah. like that. But I'll you know take I'll pay attention to that stuff when I when I choose to care. Um, and Ramtaz Revelations <laughs> Halt uh, what is this Halt Court Martial. So I guess Ramtaz oh, was supposed to have like I guess he won this he was supposed to do something where he was gonna like reveal Salvation's identity or something. Um, I don't know, but he says here in the article, uh, we've analyzed classified experimental equipment that was recently delivered to enable Salvation's super weapons. The components are near identical to advices found at the Proteus Research Facility in the Trapezium sector. I would like to check this out um, at some point. Probably not today, but like, this seems like an interesting thread to uh, uh, sort of uh, look at. I don't yeah, know. sorry, I don't know. I'm just, I'm just, I'm just... I've just arrived at the, uh, the the station on the CG, and there's a Type Nine jammed in the slot ready so things. So. Of course there is. Well, at least it's not a beluga. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> What's up, Ozzy? Flies oh, cool. seven, by the way. Uh, NMLA is that the new COVID vaccine? Yeah, that's for the Unicron variant. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, the Bra the Bra Bra Brabicon, Brabicon, COVID Brabicon. <laughs> um, <laughs> but yeah, so today there's like a big community goal going. And at first I was kind of panicking, thinking it was a Colonia goal. But it turns out it's actually like a dual yeah. CG. So there's like a CG in Colonia and a CG in the bubble, which I think is kind of nice. It's good to see the Colonia people getting a little bread thrown their way. You know, the little fledgling frontier people out there in the in the sort of uh, the small remote mini bubble, yeah, yeah. I guess you call it. Um, but of course, you know, whether you're in the bubble or Colonia, you can contribute. Um, and essentially what the, the, you know, there's been a few community goals in this vein and essentially what they're trying to do is build a bridge from the bubble to Colonia. And right now I think it's just like, it's, it's not fleet carriers, it's like mega ships or something, right? Dockable mega ships uh, that are scattered along the way to create kind of like waypoints. And this CG is now kind of going to the next level and uh, they're going to put stations uh, in, in a sort of route to Colonia. Which I think is really cool because, you know, when you are making that huge distance, it is nice to have those, like, stop-off points. It kind of minimizes the risk of running into, you know, one of those uh, uh, alien things that, like, the alien the seashells that will zap you in the nebulistic yeah. clouds and stuff like that and destroy you and destroy all of your uh, exploration data. So it is kind of nice to have, like, little pit stops along the way where you can sort of cash in. Yeah. 
Because they did do um, ground bases all the way to Colonia, didn't they? They, they built oh, ground they? bases all the way, but they never put them on the galaxy map. So I remember I, think I went used them on the way back, so every 2,000 or 1,000 jumps. Right. But they never seemed to be like easy to find. And I was like, they should just put, I hope they put these ones on the map so you can just click, you know, just click, I want to see the bridge, and then the, all those things will be there to see something. Because that'll make it really accessible to pilots trying to get out there, something. Well, just like, like you know, like, 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 got a good thing. Oh. What's he saying there? Morgan's is saying in the thing. I've been wondering if Salvation might be one of Asimov's successful human Thargoid hybrids. Yeah, which is a cool. One. I like that. Yeah. That's a great one. I'm not thought of that. So I think like that. That uh, there's like kind of two theories that I, I've seen out there. One is that yeah, he's like I can't remember what they called it, like Subject Twelve or some Child Thirteen or right. something. Um, <laughs> like one of those test subjects who has like that connection to the Thargoid network. The other theory is that he's a guardian AI. That was like, uh, you know, an, a, a, a seated out there, and he's like an AI that's using the the satellite network to kind of communicate. Right? I'm kind of like yeah. leaning more towards it being related to Azimuth because obviously, like, he's exposing all the Azimuth stuff, and um, yeah, yeah, you, you know. But I, I I think both are pretty cool theories. Um, yeah, so it's it, cool, isn't it? I mean, like, if it was a Guardian AI, then that would require them to develop, like, new Guardian storyline, and they seem to not really have been focused on that. So I think this probably is the right theory, is that, like, he's one of those, like, test subjects that escaped, right? Which was, um, yeah. there was a whole storyline thread, we did a stream on that one, um, where there were, like, t uh, a bunch of bases that you could find that would talk about the experiments, and that was a really, really cool... Uh, yeah, yeah, they're great. Those bases, aren't they? Yeah, yeah. yeah. And then I, get, well, I can't remember what we got from them, but there were some cool um, uh, rewards for checking them out, like money or something like that. But um, some trink trinkets, some some like like uh, bracelets and, and here's little, berries. Yeah, 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 here's like a little <laughs> bobblehead for your <laughs> for your yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> But yeah, so we're going to be doing the community goal. We're going to, obviously, like, you know, I always do these streams in open. So, you know, if you're Tony Curtis or something like that, come, 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 come get some, you know. Um, but <laughs> um, we're going to be delivering stuff to the Alcor system. The CG is to bring, like, computer components, um, ceramic composites, and other baubles and trinkets or whatever to Alcor. Um, so I looked it up on Inra, and apparently the Paletes system uh, is a good place to grab the uh, computer components. Oh. Hey, Hello, Bernardi, how you doing? You got your mic fixed? Yeah, so... I already... <laughs> called to the uh, EDDB and I have some size for you for pickup. I will send you the link. Cool. On the Discord. Yeah, throw it in the Discord. Yeah, so we're, um, it's only four jumps from... Sh I'm at Shinrata right now. And just to, like, take a look at this beautiful, chunky um, ship that I'm flying here. It's a beautiful T Type 9. Hold on, I'm going to get an exterior. I've loaded it up with all sorts of rusty spikes to make it look intimidating, right? That way, you know... Yeah, like, man. That way the pirates think twice before messing with this chunk of, chunk of metal. <laughs> it is a beautiful, huge ship. The T9 is one of those ships, like, like the T9 and the Beluga are the two that really... You know, when you walk out into the hangar, you're like, whoa, <laughs> that's a big boy. Um, yeah, yeah. They're, they're just humongous, aren't they? You really get the thing. You get, say you've seen them, and you walk underneath them, and you go, oh my god, yeah, they're like the size of an office block, or thing. Yeah, it's kind of, I just got to walk to my ship, and it's like, geez, this is like getting my daily exercise, you know? <laughs> like, yeah, then we the, need the, do the travelators soon, don't we? So, we? so we can just walk along, and it'll just move us twice as fast to get to the ship, <laughs> I think. I feel like so if far you're, as that. they need to have like uh, uh, some sort of like suit modification for like quick feet or something that allows you to like run faster. <laughs> Just so that you yeah, can get yeah, to your yeah. get to your ship in a reasonable amount of time. Um, yeah, yeah. But uh, no, really, or with like these... a, a, hmm? a skip intro button. So when you're running, you can skip the intro <laughs> of your ship. You just, so I just want to get in straight away because the blue circle could be anywhere. Couldn't it really just get in? <laughs> it, or, or maybe multiple, just take it with you. Multiple, yeah, exactly. Yeah, like like blue circle, um, uh, like a little <laughs> teleporter device, right? I mean, essentially, yeah, yeah. like you wonder the blue circle feels like a VR sort of sort of thing or whatever. Yeah. Doesn't it? Like, yeah. I don't like these VR games though, where you have to like throw yourself around and just warp everywhere. Like I prefer to just walk, but that gives you motion sickness, right? So that that's how yeah, that could yeah, be like a good uh, VR um, Odyssey tweak is just like, okay, well then just put like friggin' blue circles everywhere, right? <laughs> yeah. yeah. 
I well, slow everyone walking from there. There'd be loads of commanders being sick everywhere. Maybe this actual there. Their um, commanders would actually walk around being sick if they're in VR. So it's just oh, commanders <laughs> walking around just throwing up all over the station. He just got the station <laughs> janitor and he's like, damn these VR people. Why did they ever, why did they ever give VR support for Odyssey? Yeah. It's just creating a mess that I gotta clean up. Stairs. <laughs> oh my god. And Luke is, uh, by the way, uh, Aquatic Borealis, hello. Uh, and Luke is just giving me an F uh, preemptively as I'm going through the mail slot like he thought I was going to blow up. <laughs> I appreciate the, the confidence. <laughs> Did you see the um, ship scale video for over Christmas? I think. No, I that didn't. Guy does them. Every, the guy does one every few years. He does them all in like sort of grey box style sort of um, things, I and uh, it's really cool. Yeah, he did, 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 did it up to everything, but then he also put in the um, the oh. what's it called? Oh, uh, what's the one they? The, the one that everyone's waiting for, the Panther Clipper. He put a, the obviously the, the data mind version that, of that thing. That doesn't exist. I, okay, okay, I did see like a screenshot of that and it looked like a Type 9 with a trailer. <laughs> yeah. And I'm yeah, like, yeah. I don't know if that's real. I'm like, I feel like that's like someone just put like something on the back of a T9. Like, because hey! the original one, the old the old games looked like it. it was like a big square block with four little legs on it, sort of thing. Yeah, yeah. So I don't know. I don't know. I don't know what it was. Right? It's, you know, obviously, it would only just go through the mail slot. So if if NPCs get those, every station will be gummed up forever. It'd be amazing. <laughs> it's true. Like if you can, it, like, uh, there's already uh, like enough problems with like type. Nine. If you ever go to Shinrata in open, and it's like an yeah. instance that's been open for a while, there's usually like a line of ships of NPCs just like stuck in limbo. Uh, the Panther Clipper yeah, yeah. would absolutely break the game. Everyone would die. Um, an Aquatic Borealis thing. Maybe they need when... a hoverboard like Warframe did. And actually, that would be pretty cool. If, if we got like Back to the yeah, Future style uh, hoverboards that we could fly <laughs> around with, how cool would that be? And sorry, I've just like smashed into a Neutron Star. I'm at a 200% heat. Like, <laughs> this is getting what off to a great wrong? start. Yeah, loot, prep your F. <laughs> this yeah. may be a real one. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Of course, I have to do these um, uh, Neutron Star White Dwarf uh, uh, boosted jumps because this Type 9, even though I've got a good FSD booster on here, it, it, it's like pretty good. It still needs a little bit of assistance uh, to, yeah. make, to make the journey uh, a little bit less tedious. There we go. Got ourselves a supercharge. And oh my god, can this heat go away? I did a heat sink and it didn't even do anything. Oh, no, it didn't do anything, did it? Yeah. yeah. Um, well, I've, lo I've lost two. Okay. What was that? I mean, there is a there is a white dwarf. Why are you doing that? <laughs> white dwarfs are really dangerous, aren't they? Yeah. I mean, it's, are you it... gonna get boost from that thing on a time nine? Are you out of your mind? Yes, <laughs> absolutely, <laughs> completely out of my mind. I mean, you have higher rebound than me, so. But that makes I it. That makes it. You do not do that. When the risk goes up, then you know that's where you really feel uh, how dangerous this galaxy is, right? So, I, I'm all about risk. I think risk. And, well, it would be nice if there was like reward for it. It would be nice if like the higher your rebuy was, the more the market would pay you. But that's just not how economics works, apparently. <laughs> it is still. It makes it more fun though. That, but that's He's also smart, why. Though. That, that's also why you have ten billion dollars and I'm broke. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, look, 94%, I only lost 6% hull, so that's like, that's pretty good in my books. Of course, my control panel seems to be on fire and smoking, but that's what <laughs> we have fire extinguishers for. Yeah, that's what your hull's for, isn't it? You've got to use it up, otherwise it's just a waste of money sat there. So. Exactly. And Morg Smash is saying, the white dwarfs are the most dangerous object in the galaxy. Not quite, sir. I think I am, but they <laughs> are a close, a close, close second. And I wish Yeah, that... I've lost a time line for one. Oh yeah, and one day I really, I actually, you know what? I, I would say high G planets are probably the most yeah, dangerous. Yeah, they're thing. the ones. <laughs> so they totally sneak up on you. You go yeah, on fire, yeah. and then you go, oh my god, and you, and you have to really go in so slow and not use your down thrust at all. Yeah, so. yeah. Like a white dwarf, <laughs> yeah. Like if you smack into it and you have heat sinks, you're probably okay. Oh, here's another one. Hold on. Let me not smack into this. <laughs> as long as you have your lines on, you can just kind of, kind of squeeze your way by, but. Um, you know, if you know how to do the white dwarf, if you come in from this angle, like I, I have done the scooping where you come in going straight at the star, and that is certainly uh, not safe, but it can be fun. 
Okay, okay now that... Just let me get out of this damn vortex of pain. Uh, but look at that, four <laughs> jumps, right? Like, like, what is my uh, yeah. jump range right now? It is uh, with a uh, white dwarf boost, not a neutron star. It's uh, 54 light years, right? On a Type 9. So put that in your pipe and smoke it. <laughs> Braben. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, we're going to come into Paletes, and then uh, what's the station we're going to? Um, Underwood or something like McDonald. that? And we'll McDonald, pick up... is it? Oh, no, it's Underwood. We, oh, okay. We can stop at McDonald's if you want a cheeseburger, but... Yeah, that's the one, that's the one at the, um... Oh, yeah, yeah we're going uh, in by the way... What's up? Well, what do you get first? So, I have a few things I would like to report. First is ceramic com composite is not looking very good now. I, 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 think I, I think this one is for computer components. Oh shit, Underwood Gateway is 163 light seconds away. That's not terrible. That's, that's okay. Yeah. That's right, yeah. If, if you use the EDDB link I gave you and filter alcohol on the current system, you will, you could see all the station that sells uh, ceramic composites. So... But do they sell them in Alcor? Or is the, so oh, those like the one of the corner you, you can see the supply. So the first anything, any station that sells under a hundred is no go. Yeah, I mean I, I, I was using um Inara to find uh like stations to go and it seems like I guess they plotted this out pretty no, well. No, you don't use that. So for commodity you should only use EDDB. Oh what's that? Uh -huh. You use EDDB you can quickly sort out the the station you don't want to dock. For oh, example, like which ones? Have, which ones have large pads and stuff like that? Inara does that too. You can yeah. you can see the pad size um, on there, which you obviously is important. Open up when you're... the window on the on the link I gave you. So the first the first result uh, it says it has four thousand supply, but <coughs> the state the station is. Some ninety uh, eight k from the start, so that's no go. So the next next uh, target is let me see. Oh, by the way, Aquatic Borealis said, "I hope Frontier changes their mind about VR. It's the only way I play." And I will, I will say this: um, Elite is the only game that I really, truly think is like the best VR game. It, it is number one in VR. The immersion and the, like the lack of motion sickness that you get from it, I get why probably Odyssey is like a bit difficult because as soon as you start walking around, like even in the SRV in VR, I get motion sickness. So I can imagine why it's going to be like a challenge. Um, but yeah, I think VR in this game is transformative. I haven't, I don't play that much VR though um, anymore, but I, ho I do hope they. Uh, I do hope eventually yeah, my Odyssey gets it. My brother's it. got VR, and I had a go on it, and for the um, Odyssey thing, you get the big screen, sort of um, theatre screen, and even that going upstairs made me feel really sick going upstairs. I don't know, I don't know why, yeah. but um, it, it is so cool, the game in VR. It's, you know, I've, I've not played it ever for like six, seven years, and it was like, wow, this is really quite cool. But again, I can imagine all the lining up, everything to make sure everything works properly yeah. is a lot of work, which... Yeah, hopefully it's, one day. It's just like, yeah, like, putting on the helmet, and then, like, I find, like, like my face gets really sweaty when you're doing long stints in VR. And so, like, I yeah, have yeah. to, like, <laughs> really... And maybe that's a good thing, is, like, you really have to sort of, like, dice up your playtime, so I can't play more than, like, maybe an hour or two in VR. But it's probably right. not a bad thing, because you don't want to get stuck in a virtual world and then become, like, a cyber person... That, you know. Yeah, there's not a lot you can do in an hour at least, is it? It always takes at least two hours to get any one thing basically started. Well, that's the irony, Oh, I must right? get my ship first. It was yeah, even, yeah. even like before this stream, it took me like an hour just to get to where I was going, <laughs> to order my ships, yeah. to outfit the ships, do a little engineering tweaks, and, um, <laughs> yeah. you know, it's, it's just kind of like... Like pruning and gardening. So yeah, it's, 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 that's a lot yeah. of damn prep work. Um, but, you know, I got a pretty nice... Um, I've got uh, mine launchers and shock mines. I got shield cell banks, ECMs. We talked about last week. What the, whatever the hell those do. Um, I got guardian <laughs> frameshift drive boosters, an engineered shield generator, thrusters. Like everything is top top of the line here on this T9. This is an absolute beast of a ship now. Wait, where are you going? 
Uh, going to Underwood <laughs> Gateway in the Palettes system. That's where we're gonna start off. I'll do the first hall from there. Head to Alcor, drop it off, and then we'll find maybe a, uh, a closer station. Going to Kwanon. What, what are some... you holding? Uh, I think I'm going to pick up <laughs> computer components, but possibly also uh, dead memes. Why are you going for a station that's so far away? <laughs> because, uh, you go there. You know, it's because uh, that you know what? Because, okay, okay, let me pick a station for you. Yeah, but you know what? Because this station is so far away, no one else is going to be doing it, right? If you do the thing that no one else would do, you're going to find yourself in a very safe territory, right? Like, See, no one else would go here, nowhere. therefore, it's it's going to be a good place. No! So you can see... Anything that we are distance over, uh, over one tree is no go. Trading is only 101. My, my policy is usually, yeah, like 200,000 two, two, two light years away is that's where it's like okay that's where it's like okay now it's a pain in the ass really 400 400k is where i'm like that's ridiculous <laughs> and we need like we need like a super cruise boost function to like deal with those things because otherwise you're just sitting in your ship for literally 10 minutes right but 100k 100 200k away that's like about a five to seven minute journey it's okay um and 07 joe schmelvalor hello uh, and Aquatic Royale saying you only play 1.5 hours at a time max. Yeah, I mean, I think like, yeah, like one to two hours is usually, I think, like a good play session, though. You know, if you're in deep with exploration, sometimes like three or four hours, like, goes by like nothing. Depends on what you're doing, right? Yeah, yeah. If, it, if it's trading, it's kind of boring and repetitive. If it's exploration, sometimes you find things and you're just kind of excited. Usually when I'm streaming, it's like I'm playing for like three to four hours uh, in a stream, sometimes five. But that, like, lately, the only time I've really been playing Elite is when I'm streaming. So it's like, that's my, like, four or five hours for the week, right? Um, but, you know, it's, uh, I don't know. I've been trying to, like, play more, but I find, like, I don't care about career progression anymore in this game. <laughs> I just want to have fun. Yeah. And uh, that kind of gets hampered by my bank account balance. So I got to do oh. some, like, mining soon or something. Hopefully we'll make some money from this CG. I and need to... It. Something is wrong <laughs> with my ship now. The what? Uh, I can't enter cruise for some reason. You can't enter super cruise? It's just locked up. What did you do? Uh, yeah, no. I can... I can disable it. I can cancel it. But... Just yeah, whenever I press... Press J or the key... Enter super cruise, it just... It's charging on the huh. spot and nothing Try smashing it with a hammer. Uh, that usually works for me. It's just just beat on it a little bit, you know. Uh, <laughs> then I post in the, your last uh, tip for you. That station I let. What the, the one that you posted there, Kit Kazim Hub? Yeah, seventy A, whatever. Oh, seventy A Mercy Majoris. That's that's got to be close to Ali off. Nine hundred and eleven. 185 from the start, so very close. Okay. According to the EVDB, it has 5,000 supplies, so it should be good, good it's to locked, go. It's stocked and ready to go. And Josh Muffler, yeah, he's 153. Yeah, you get to Alcor, that's your next day, so if you are. Yeah, Josh Muffler. Yeah, Josh Muffler is 153 jumps to his next exploration leg at 25 wow. per hour. Wow, that's uh, that's actually not a lot of jumps when you think about it, right? Like sometimes I'll do twenty-five jumps in in just to get across the bubble, right? Depending on the ship, but you're you're yeah. probably doing thorough, you know, like scan the system and all that stuff. Seventeen hours straight jumping your fleet carrier. Wow, that's almost a whole Earth wow, day. Wow. That is a lot, man. That's insane. That yeah, is yeah. a lot. Uh, and then Tigger showed up. Oh, greetings, Mister Special. I logged off at the CG last night. I'll be back home in an hour. See you soon. I'll see you soon, too, yeah. <laughs> I'll, I'll, be, I'll be, like, yeah, my... probably finishing my second round, or hopefully uh, hopefully not rebuying. <laughs> I don't know if there's, yeah, like, expect... stalkers at the CG right now, but maybe. I expect Kevin Banana at the CG who instincts me, but I got away, he's alright, so I think. He seemed quite jolly. So, yeah. I've got mine. And Kevin, so... Kevin Banana's a good name, I thought, as well. If Kevin Banana wants to wants to rumble, then I will, <laughs> I will make a banana split. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> with my with my shock mines, no, it's just like well, that is that is my kind of strategy. Is if I do get interdicted, like submit for it. I do have dirty drives, so it's like you know, my, it's relatively fast. But then just start 
launching mines, and people get really scared of mines. I do not have Reverb Cascade. I should have got that um, engineered oh, yeah, yeah. onto my mines, but, like, because uh, Reverb Cascade is the one that just, like, I think it was, like, yeah, Tukosa, you were showing me that video by uh, Commander Naquan, where he had, like, a oh, yeah, yeah. with Reverb Cascade mines, and he was, like, destroying Corvettes. Like, that's a, yeah. that's a, a scary <laughs> combo. In a Cobra. It's in so a cobra. amazing, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> But yeah, you, like I, I've um, flown around in like Type Sevens with mines, and when people will look at your modules and they see the mines, they kind of get, they kind of do a double take, right? It actually throws the uh, the gankers or the uh, um, you know PVP guys for a loop. They don't know what to do. They get intimidated. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you're out on your first exploration uh, expedition near Sage. That's a beautiful area. Very very thick with uh, stars. I need to get back. Yeah, I really want to go. I've, yeah, I've, I went out to um, Colonia, but I never went to Sajay, and I should have done. Oh, you did. Yeah, my my mind was broken after the Sajay bit, but yeah. I think I carry now, especially with these these stations they get through, it make it a bit easier. Honestly, so, I'm, I'm really thinking I want to do another exploration thing. Uh, I was thinking about like I haven't done exploration in a Phantom before, and that's a great exploration ship. Yeah, so great I was thinking ship, like I'll make a bit of money in the bubble because it doesn't seem like we're gonna get that on foot Thargoid war that I thought we would. You know, back when yeah. Odyssey, when Odyssey launched like literally almost a year ago, I thought you know it'll be a few months and then we'll get some on foot Thargoid content. But no, no, I I, I I'm not waiting for them to put stuff uh, in the game anymore they don't have a damn roadmap um i think i'm <laughs> fucked uh oh what happened <laughs> what'd you do i lost so uh did i tell you i cannot uh count my cruise yeah yeah you're so saying I look that. back i'm free flying and my altimeter says i'm negative one meter from the ground what the you're F under the ground. <laughs> you went underground. What do you have? A submarine? I'm clearly not underground. Uh, yeah, see, I put a uh, screenshot on it. <coughs> I don't know, man. Uh, that is. Let's see here. We stuff. Yeah, you're negative one meters. Well, do you, do you have um, do you have fuel? That's the usually the first fuel and uh, um, what do you call it? power? Yes. Yeah, you can see the screenshot. Everything is fine. Do you want me to come shoot you with mines? I don't know if that would help, but if all else fails, <laughs> drop some mines on you. Try and blow you into space. Uh, yeah. <laughs> try, try finding a geyser and then just put your T9 on top of it and then turn flight assist on. See if that helps you. That can, that can in theory, work. <laughs> <laughs> what could go wrong? <laughs> just get, get to, get, um, if you could maybe take a taxi to another station and then order your ship, right? That could be another way to do it. Uh, yeah, like, is, um, yeah. I'm almost half a half a ship worth of cargo. Uh, so if I self-destruct, I will lose everything. And they don't yeah. self don't self-destruct. Don't don't don't. And I'm clearly no, flying no above the ground, and you, it it just says I'm mass lock. So, you know um, you. You could also try um, uh, logging into Horizons and then logging back in Odyssey. A lot of times, if you get in the weird spots, that seems to be like a really good way to sort of just like reset oh, yeah, the galaxy. <laughs> but does does it wipe your key buttons? It used to a bit ago, which is really annoying. Or you know what you do is it does. A log into yeah. log into the base game, oh. like not even Horizons. Log into like Elite Dangerous Original Edition. All oh, right. And and then it'll yeah. pop you up into orbit, right? Oh yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah. Because you get instantaneous orbit works well on those high G worlds. Um, and Aquatic Royale is saying something out here. Um, Warframe has an app on it that you can load on your phone, which allows you to do some things which are considered maintenance. That's freaking cool, man. Like, I would love that if you could, like... It, like, imagine if you could move your fleet carrier while you're at work just by logging into an app and moving it around. Uh, yeah, yeah, I know. Yeah, that would be great. Okay, so do you want to hear a story about phones? <laughs> about what? About phones. Bones. Don't you guys have phones? Oh, phones. F oh, phones. <laughs> I thought you said bones. I was like, are you gonna like confess to a murder here? <laughs> you guys want to so, hear a story about my bones? Uh, I think you you know I'm a World of Warcraft player, right? Are so, you? No, I did not know that. 
back in the olden days, uh, the olden days, you can use uh, <laughs> you can use the phone to access uh, various function or WoW, i.e. auction house. So basically, uh, auction house in WoW is a major part of the game. Of course, you can literally buy game time out of it use, using gold. Okay. You know, it's just they please just open the API to some third party app to third party app as a test, okay. and some of the API is linked to the auction house. That's why your phone can access it, right? And basically, your phone is just like a fancy version of a uh, web browser, right? So, what happened is they abused the heck of it. Okay. I mean, there, there is a bug button problem on basically every MMO ever, WoW being the biggest ever. So, it's the heaviest infected by bots. Mm -hmm. The reason is. The bots can literally farm gold and they trade gold with real world currencies and yeah. people buy those gold so they can participate in what what's called a sales run. Basically it's just a dungeon run or raid. Uh, people who carry uh, those uh, don't want to learn or don't have the equipment level to participate in so they literally buy the uh, equipment out of gold and in turn USD real, real world currency okay so it's a circle economy the bots farm the gold they sell stuff on the auction house but who buys buy the who buys them other the bots yeah bots are selling to bots yeah, that's why wow. I said full is not a good idea uh, if you wanna so you're uh, saying if they do phone stuff then then bots are gonna be all over it but you know what like uh, this galaxy is full of bots they're called npcs yeah <laughs> e yeah. ep maintenance nice one digger. um so this is a weird route so yeah like i just plotted the route to alcor and yeah obviously it's using a lot of these um white dwarf stars wow, there's like that's a crazy route. yeah there's like one two three um white dwarf jumps in a row but that's pretty good um i'll be able to yeah, make yeah. it to, uh from alcor or from where i am in about six jumps which for a big big ship like this that's not too bad i'm impressed <laughs> Yeah. Um, Warframe is good at keeping people hooked up all the time, but Warframe is all Digital Extreme does. All Digital Extreme does. Frontier is a number of games they manage. Yeah, like, um, you know, like, really, they only have, like, three games, if you think about it. Like, they have Elite, and then they've got, like, Planet Zoo and Planet Coaster are basically the same damn game. And then, like, Jurassic Park is, like, one and two, right? I guess they've got, like, other... They're, like, now acting as a publisher, so, like, there's, like, Lemnis Gate, but I don't think they're making it. I think they just, like, are publishing it on behalf of another company. That one looks interesting, but I haven't really got into yeah. it. I've seen some streams for it, but... It's a neat concept. It's kind of like... Imagine Team Fortress Classic, but it's one-on-one, -on -one and it's a time loop, so, like, you do a one-on-one -on -one capture the flag thing or whatever, and then it resets, and then in the next 30 seconds, you play again, but you see, like, the ghosts of your first playthrough going through, but you can, you know, for example, like, let's say um, you capture the flag uh, in the first round. The other guy can either try to capture the flag in the second round or try to stop you from your first round capturing the flag. It's neat and complicated, but... Um, I, yeah, I it's pretty it. cool. I'd say I'm too old, I think. <laughs> it's like, oh, no, I've keep go back over it. It looks really cool as a concept. Like. It's, yeah, it's like a neat concept that I just don't think would be like, like, it's probably like a neat proof of concept, but it didn't look like something that I would regularly play, so I just never got into it, but I watched like a little bit of a stream of it, and it looked neat. Like, I like games like Team Fortress 2 and, and sort of like team-based combat games like that, and this one has a cool spin on it with the time loop, but... I got, I got too many games, man. A uh, friend of mine just got me. Yeah, yeah. What the hell? There was a game that I got that was like a time loop game. Uh, what the hell is it called? Hold on. Let me just see here. It's on my desktop somewhere. It's called Death Loop. Um, oh, yeah. Pretty neat little concept where it's like. Uh oh, hold on. I got an NPC trying to interdict me here. Watch out, them NPCs. They'll take you down. They don't care. Them bots. <laughs> they don't care about who you are. Um. 
but yeah, like like Death Loop is basically like you play like an assassin who wakes up on the beach, but he's lost his memory, doesn't know where he is, and um, there's another assassin tracking you, and you're on this island, and basically you find I don't want to spoil it, but like you, you start figuring out who you were. Um, at the same right. time, you figure out like okay, like you're in this time loop that resets. So every time you die, you sort of reset at the beginning, and you lose all your progress. Um, and you're kind of like you have to kill like eight people on the island to like reset the loop. But meanwhile, this other oh, assassin right. is like hunting you. And what's kind of yeah. crazy is that there's a multiplayer function. And so once you play through this campaign with that character. You can then jump into the other character and invade other people's games and be that assassin, right? Oh, that's quite cool. Yeah, yeah. So you're kind of like going along, and all of a sudden it's like, oh no, you're being invaded by this other assassin, and it's actually another player coming into your game to stalk you. Um, oh, it's cool. A that's excellent. Yeah. Neat concept, right? Um, yeah, yeah, great concept. And it's got a really fun, um, like '70s kind of vibe to it, like really good voice acting. So I'm really, um, I've enjoyed. Um, that a little bit of that, but I haven't played through it yet. I haven't beat it. Got distra- I got <laughs> well, distracted. Loot, so... loot says being alive. Now that's a time loop game. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it certainly is. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But I, I, you know, I, well, I thought something like mobile game would like be cool if you could have your factional station and elite, and you had that on your mobile thing. It's like a bit of a management game to <laughs> keep like a PGS you tracker. Oh. Yeah, in a strange way, and you could say, I'm, I'm going to try and upgrade the station and do bits and bobs. It'd be kind of like a sort of quite a chilled sort of sideline yeah. game. I would then love I suppose it if you could do that with like, like fleet carriers and then your NPC pilots. Yeah. If, like, rather than them just sitting around taking your fucking money for doing absolutely <laughs> jack shit, if like, yeah, yeah. you could go on your phone and tell your NPC pilot, like, yeah, do some cargo hauling for me. And then they would go out and start hauling cargo, and then. Uh, while they were out there, maybe they could actually be like an NPC in the game, and if they get, you know, killed or if they succeed in missions, it kind of comes through. I would love that kind of stuff, just to to yeah. feel like the universe is there when you're not. Because the way I always like yeah, yeah. picture it in my mind is when I'm not playing, I'm just like sitting at a station at the bar. You know what I mean? Like my character's still yeah. in the universe. I'm just you know not flying a ship at that time. Well, um, when you don't stream, we don't exist back to us thing. We Everyone just, we load it up. <laughs> this is where Chikosa reveals I am an NPC. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm actually I'm trying I'm, to escape the code. Yeah, I'm, ah. a, I'm a brave and bot. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Something like Groundhog Day meets Terminator. Uh, yeah, it is going like People are gonna abuse that. Yeah, but what you know, you know, people are gonna automate that. But you know what? It's kind of like you know, like like they people would, are gonna yeah. abuse anything. Like people already abuse engineering. They abuse game physics glitches you know like like at a certain point yeah like like you make things because they're good and then like you figure out okay how will people abuse this and then figure out a way to stop them i mean so i was, I was playing... the cool thing is sorry you, do, do you have a do you have ever uh, heard of Ooh, what you called uh obscurity by complexity oh so yeah yeah obscurity, obscurity, by, complexity. obscurity yeah. by complexity I mean, Which is kind of how the BGS works. Really. Is, so the theory is everything can be exploited by yeah. automation, right? Yeah. If you pay enough for it. Sure. But that how much it can be deterred is depending on uh, the uh, how do you say it in English? Uh, how how much effort you put into it as a cost. Yeah, cost. So yeah, my main gripe against of this uh, use your phone instead of actually playing the game is phone is easy to exploit, way yeah. too easy than uh, your computer. But you know, my my, my counter to that would be like yeah, like if but if it's like okay, like if you're only able to use your phone to let's say like give your little NPCs mission or move your fleet carrier around, I don't think that's, like, that Like yeah, that, yeah. that can't, like, break the game. Like, oh, no, this guy um, moved his fleet carrier. Like, you're spending tritium to do that, right? So, you know, I, I guess, like, yeah, if your little NPCs are making money, but at the same time, like, let me put it this way. Like, people exploit all sorts of glitches in the game to make a ton of money anyway. So to me, it's kind of like, like, 
you know, those little functions that would allow me as a pilot to kind of, you know, I'm at work and I can't log into the game, but I could check it on my phone and just see what my little NPCs are doing. I, I like that idea. But yeah, like, they would obviously have to make it non-exploitable, because, like, I think you make a good point, Zakao, is like, you know, if you put it on the phone, then, then people can program a bot on an app, right? I think it's funny, so, I like to say, people are almost being like, oh, God, Zakao. Like where is the uh, aspect of the game into a mini game, right? Game within a game. So, the idea is that you don't need to use your computer to do stuff. The, uh, well, you can't I mean, use a console. Sure. You, you don't need to. <laughs> Fuck. Poor console players. I feel bad, bad for them because a lot of them are just in that waiting phase of like, when do we get Odyssey? Are we still part of your plans, Brayden? It is kind of sad. Uh, I do hope okay, that my, uh, Odyssey comes. My to idea console. is so the so I'm just I ju I ju I'm just emptied a station with it's all its ceramic supply. So that got me thinking. So. The one thing uh, this game missing is uh, truly a uh, market in its truly sense. I .e. the market oh, is hold on, I'm being interdicted. Like one sec. One. It's just an NPC though. Don't worry. It's oh. uh, these NPCs can't do shit. They can't. They couldn't interdict a damn uh, rock, uh, let alone a T9. <laughs> it is kind of like you do really notice the chunky steering when you get interdicted on a T9 versus like. I've been used to flying around in a courier. It's a big damn difference, but <laughs> yeah. done. Oh, wait, wait, can you find me? And Joe, that's a very nice offer. Yeah, I mean, I, I do want to do, like cool. if I was doing uh, an exploration uh, expedition, which I'm thinking about doing, and like I, I don't know when, but some point this year, I want to load up a crate Phantom with all the gizmos and gadgets and go out there. Sagittarius A would be kind of a cool um, waypoint or destination. Like, I don't think I'm ready to do a Beagle Point kind of deal. Like, that's interesting to me, but, like, that's also a lot of commitment. Um, we could also go and see if we can find the rudest looking plant in the galaxy. So that could be the whole. Because <laughs> there's, there's some really obscene looking ones. It's like, wow. <laughs> I've seen some mushrooms that look very much like dongs. Um, but like, yeah, yeah. Like, like, if I was doing an exploration edition, I would want to stream it. Um, I remember when I did the um, uh, the Dove Enigma expedition, I streamed every leg of the journey um, from the bubble to Colonia. Um, and that was a really cool thing, because there's a lot of things that you can stop off and see. Like, like you can find, um, what's the damn, it's like EDSM or one of them damn uh, third party programs. Uh, has like a map with a bunch of like galactic bookmarks and so there's a lot of cool interesting things that you can pit yeah, stop up along the way that's Inara. uh yeah and does that too yeah that's a cool whole spot yeah yeah yeah, but, yeah. But edsm Inara i think has, has, like, has like an actual map so basically yeah basically map how all the people going where so yeah but my expedition is cool, going down cool stuff thing, isn't it? Um, yeah, EDSM has a specifically like a map that you can look at, and it actually has like bookmarks by category. So like, if you want to look at interesting ground facilities, or you want to look at like um, interesting stellar phenomena versus like you know mysterious settlements with interesting logs, um, you can like kind of sort them by the different things and like see it visually on the on the galaxy. So when you're kind of plotting your route, you know, okay, I'm not going too far out of the out of the way. Or you can daisy chain uh, different uh, like wonders together. So, like if you, if you guys ever go back and look at my um, uh, sort of uh, Enigma expedition streams, there was some really really cool shit that we saw. Um, one of the highlights was actually very close to Colonia. There was like this gas giant that was brighter than a star. I think those have been like since removed from the game, but um, oh, wow. really really cool to see. Um, and I went and smashed into it. And my screen went entirely white. Okay, so McDonald's Station has giant swinging hammers, beware. Oh, and look, it's got a little yeah. facility next to it, too. That's cool. Um, yeah, yeah, it's quite a cool station. Isn't it? Always scared of these swinging hammers. <laughs> um, okay, Don't go so, near them, Spatula. So, run one, uh, we've been successful. We only got interdicted by an SR, uh, or sorry, NPC. An SRV interdiction would be quite interesting. Uh, <laughs> how did you get to space, little guy? Uh, <laughs> yeah. Slow down, I've come to catch you. <laughs> 
Um, Beagle Point is a commitment. Nah, it only takes three months of your life. Yeah, that's kind of the yeah, thing, right? Um, three months. And then Joe's saying his fleet of carrier exploration ex expeditions will take care of people getting out of the dock. See, true, yeah. Like, I mean, like, one thing I was thinking is, like, maybe rather than getting, you know, uh, all the way out there, like, just hitch a ride on some fleet carrier that's already planning to go out there and then just, like, pick up from out there in deep space and then just kind of explore on the way back to the bubble. And then you're not kind of... Because to me, I find, like, with exploration journeys, the first leg of the journey, getting out to your destination, is always the most fun because oh. you're yeah, in yeah. the mode, you're getting out there. It's getting back where you start to get like the way that, back kills, isn't it? Yeah, because you're <laughs> like, oh man, like I know how long it took me to get out here, and now I have to do all of that on the way back. And so you stop exploring, you just start jump honking and stuff like that. And I think if you were to just get out there and then work your way back, you could take your time and enjoy it. And so that might be a good um, way to do it. Um, it's just like, you know, if Joe, you're leaving for Beagle Point, then I could just jump on and then just work my way back from there. And that might be... Um... God, Joe says he got there in six days in Anaconda, which is amazing. What? The game, the game has changed. Like 1,049 jumps in six days. That's Damn, insane. dude. Uh, yeah. Damn. Well, I'll tell well, you, pro, uh, you, I don't, you remember Proxim, of course. Proxim. Oxy yeah, did, yeah. did a, uh, a, in an God. FDL to Beagle Point and back with no canopy. Yeah. So, I mean, <laughs> it's possible. <laughs> if you just, yeah, if yeah, you yeah. have the knowledge and the commitment, I'll you can do, do anything. What? I mean, how do you fly <laughs> without can canopy? You, you, Dead in minutes. So he had to keep like like refilling his life support with engineering materials, right? So like every, every few often, like while he'd be fuel scooping, he's got to refill his life support. Um, absolutely insane. That dude has done some insane stuff in, in Elite. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Wow. Yeah. Okay, okay. Okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Refilling with fuel scoop while recharging life supply right without yeah. uh without a glass right yeah yeah so you are basically bombarding yourself with solar wind which is deadly radiation more powerful than the reactor number four it's, it's noble right it's fine you got sunscreen yeah, yeah. you got sunscreen yeah. Yeah. you put <laughs> yourself into a court before you <laughs> finish your refill yeah so check it out, uh, selling 680 computer products and we're making 3.7 million in profit. That's not like, you know, world shaking, but I'll take it. Is that all? That's not very much, is it? It's Everyone's saying how I great mean, money is. Yeah. I think the money is- I mean, two whole- Sorry, Zika. Um, so okay, if you, I, I think the, you notice? Sorry, sorry, just one sec. Um, so the money that you can make if you're in the top 10% is 30 million. If you're in the top 10 commanders, uh, it's 48 million. So that is freaking good money. But according to yeah, yeah. Nara, let me just hold on, double check this data. Um, if you go on Nara and community goals, uh, to be in the top ten commanders, it's somewhere between sixty-eight thousand and eighty-two thousand delivered commodities. Whoa! Whoa. Um, so I can deliver yeah, six eighty. Yeah. So let's just see eighty-two thousand commodities divided by six eighty. That would be about a hundred and twenty trips to be in the top ten. Easy. That said, it's quite a job. It, I, I, I should take a week off and just do this completely because <laughs> there is something cool here where if, uh, let me just see here, the top five contributors in Alcor will be invited to submit naming suggestions for the new star ports. So wow, if, yeah, you're you in, <laughs> if you're in the top five, if you did 120, like, like I'd have to do like 200 um, back and forth yeah. journeys, but then I could like name a station along the way to Colonia. That's kind of cool. But like, I have a life, you know. <laughs> like, um, that said, obviously, like if the if the the whole thing gets um, tier five, then they'll have five stations, and we'll get a modified six A frame shift drive. I'm not sure. I think we get the six A, four A, and three A. Like each tier um, the, unlocks a new um, FSD. But then, like, once you hit tier five, like you get all three of them. And then tier six, all additional commodities delivered will count towards personal contribution totals. But I'm like, the hell does that mean? So I don't know. There isn't even a, like, yeah. but then you see like tier five is like really low and then there's a huge gap to tier six. So my goal is really just to make sure because like anyone who's in the top 75% will be awarded um, the FSD. And that's really what I'm interested in. And according to Inara, 
Uh, that is about 1,600 to about 4.3k 4. um, commodities. So again, looking at uh, what's my uh, capacity is 680, or let's say, uh, yeah, so let's say like, we want to deliver 5,000 divided by 680, we'll need to make about seven point, so about eight trips, right? That's not too bad, is it? Yeah, it's yeah. not terrible. I don't, I don't, you know, yeah, yeah, it's, yeah. It's, it's, it's 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 trading, which is not the most compelling form yeah. of elite dangerous gameplay. But hell, I want that damn FSD, man. Yeah, um, yeah. I think I suddenly thought, yeah, I should do that. And hold on, Joe said here the the most insane thing I ever heard someone doing was circumnavigation of the galaxy in an E-rated Sidewinder, and with the only addition was an E-rated fuel scoop. Ouch. I mean Ooh, that that's that's a, that's a slow yeah. burn, right? Like that's someone who doesn't like, uh, ever see society again. <laughs> <They're>, <laughs> yeah. It's like I don't, I'm never going back to the bubble. I'm just gonna slowly wake my way. But then you think about it, like there are certain areas of the galaxy where if you don't have like an A-rated FSD, you could get really stuck. Like navigation yeah, yeah. becomes an issue if your jump range is below 20. Like that can be really um, a huge pain in the ass. There are areas you just can't yeah, get to. Yeah, that's why. Yeah, the one aspect I hope the game to improve is the base game style, i.e. flying the ship. <laughs> Most ship we uh, uh, anything C, C rated FSD is not worth flying, to, to be honest. Yeah. I mean, what the fuck? Auto docking slammed me into the pole. <laughs> Yeah. Never trust the uh, no auto docker. Never trust the auto docker. All right, oh, so I'm gonna, really? I'm gonna just see if there's anything. Uh, so yeah, the, there is another place where we could go called Kandra, but it looks like it only has 104 quantity. Though that was only updated two hours ago. That's the lovely thing about Inara is it does give you like, when was this last updated? Why are you collecting? Sorry. <laughs> there's also HIP. Are you computer? Hold on, let me try this one. Uh, there's also a place HIP that we can get computer components. Oh, wait, no, that didn't copy. Uh, HIP 65971. Let's check it out. How far is that? Oh, that's not far. It's only two jumps. And no, uh, no, no white dwarfs that could potentially destroy us. <laughs> and the station's only 1200. Okay, so that's pretty good. Stein Muller. Wait, 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 wait. I think the last gen was the most dangerous you could possibly make it, Spatula. I know. Just like, <laughs> three white dwarfs. <laughs> it's amazing. Three, three white dwarfs in a Type 9 in open uh, with, a, yeah. with a hall. Why, with are you, a... why are you not a billionaire? You know, how, how did it happen? <laughs> I don't know why that came up as Wait, like a are suggestion. You doing, are you doing computer components? Yeah, computer components. I'm sure there's probably like a better. Um, so. Like, I'm sure there's probably a better commodity in terms of, like, money-making, but I don't really care about money. I just want to deliver quantity yeah. so I can get that damn 75%. Um, and, of course, reputation is good. So the Perez Ring Brewery, yeah, um, my reputation's cool. going up, and I'm very excited about that because I like beer. And if this is a, a true brewery, then maybe they will give me some free alcohol at the end of this. I don't know. Um, <laughs> I'm, willing to, I'm willing to take that chance. So, so according to the website, you're... You filter out the L pet. Filter out the medium pet, so you are end up with. Wow. <laughs> That's rough. Uh oh, I don't think I can make. Ah, <laughs> oh, look out! What's happening? I just boosted at the mail slot. There was another Type Nine coming in. Thankfully, <laughs> thankfully, disaster was averted. Me. Oh, was that you? I'm also talking. Oh, that was you no. auto dock. <laughs> oh, yeah. <Whoa. laughs> well, we nearly collided there. You're gonna do a uh, multi hop because the supply is pretty dry right now. I refresh. Yeah. A couple of times. Alright, well, we're gonna head to. Uh, what is this? HIP 65971 to uh, Steinmuller Dock. To pick up more computer components. <laughs> and all we need to do is basically complete about seven back and forth hauls. And that should put us yeah, in the top 75%. I, so, hey, Spatula, I would suggest you do not use uh, Inara for trading. Seriously. Why not? Do not use it. <laughs> 
Why? Because everyone else does? Only. Use UDDB only. Yeah. I, got, I got into trouble because Inara's data is not consistent with UDDB all the time. Well, I think uh, Inara basically uh, requires. for trading. Only use it because. Yeah. You will lack of some. You want to filter out some, some special thing like engineer or uh, material trader or something. <laughs> Well, you know what? It's a uh, third party, third party. It all, it all draws from the same data, but I know in Aura, like, um, uh, it's like you. No, you... it's not. The problem is, it's not. <laughs> all right, calm down. I <laughs> my uh, but... That's the problem. Yeah, all right, but uh, Mark. the same data. All right, um, so Mark's manager said he did Distant Worlds too, although he could have done it faster. It took him nine months round trip. Fast going out, wandered slowly coming back. See, it's not a bad idea. Is like just jump out to where you're going. Like just just get to Sajay in a straight line, and then wander your way back. I actually think that might be a better way to do um, exploration. Like I like that idea. Um, and what up, Mini? How you doing? You did yeah, the CK two Mini days ago. Yeah, Mini did five K. Five K, dude. Wow. In two days. Well, not oh, two wow. days. Yeah, like I'm I'm just starting up, but as long as I can get that seventy five percent. Now I'm not sure. Like again. You probably want to go over what you need to do because there are some insane commanders out there that will just, you know, deliver and deliver. And you don't want to drop back into that top 100%. Like, even if I could get to the top 50% and then just stop, by the time the CG's over, we'll probably have dropped back down to 75%. That's usually how it works, right? So yeah, you always want to kind of over and deliver. Yeah, because the thing is, too, like, the CG's could end at any moment, right? It's like as soon as the goal is hit, they're going to... Uh, close off the CG, right? So, you know, if you, if you kind of did the hauling early on and then just sort of let it go, you could find yourself getting dropped down because everyone else kept going, right? Um, but 5K is a lot, man. Like, that's what... It, I guess, like, that's going to be my goal for today and then I'll, I'll, I'll hopefully um, uh, not get dropped down because I really want that damn FSD. It's so sweet. Yeah. It's like, it's like it's engineered for distance and for boot speed. So, like, that's a great exploration thing because it not only saves you a bit of time... Um, you get like cool distance and stuff, and also Nico's asking, why does a brewery want computer chips? Do they put them in their drinks? <laughs> I mean, uh. I mean, okay. So why is a brewery res the responsible faction for building the Colonia Bridge? Right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's just like it's like it, it and I, I have a feeling that it's kind of like um, they notice there's like capitalistic opportunity here, where like explorers are out there in the black, they're having space madness, they need a drink. So we're just building all these stations solely for the purpose of having bars along the way to Colonia, but the irony is that the bartender can't serve you drinks. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, what do they need with computer chips? I don't know, man. Maybe it's like computer beer for bots. It's NPC beer. They like to drink bits and bites. Oh shit, I'm on the other side of the gas tank. <laughs> I'm on the wrong side. Um, 720 runs in a cutter. Damn, that's pretty good. So, yeah, I'm only about, wow. what am I, 680? Yeah, 680 cargo in my T9, but I didn't want to sacrifice shields, and I've got it like, I've got like an FSD booster and all that stuff, because I'm doing it in open. So, you know, it's uh, got to be prepared, right? If you don't have shields, like, you're dead in a T9. It's just that, like, you don't have a chance. So, played a little bit safe there. Uh, the CG will keep going even after the max result is reached. Oh, really, Joe? Oh, maybe that's... Yeah, this one is a little bit weird, I guess, but... Um, stretch. Yeah, because yeah. yeah, there's that huge stretch goal to Tier 6 or whatever. It's for COVID passes. They need microchips when you pay for beer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> they put little little COVID tests in your beer, so as you're drinking, you're also uh, taking the vaccine. <laughs> <laughs> I, the, now they're, it's uh, yeah, like we are in what Omicron stage of of COVID. It's mutated, uh, yeah. there's like five million mutations. So here in uh, Space Canada, <laughs> they've uh, shut down all the bars again. So you can't go have a have yourself a drink, and you can't go uh, indoor dining. You can't go to movie theaters. Well, I think you can still go to movie theaters. You just can't eat popcorn, which kind of defeats half the reason you go to the movies for these reasons. <laughs> yeah. It's like if I can't sit there munching on my popcorn during the pre-show, it's not a movie theater. Um, and Nico said, well, Jacques is a robot. Jacques sells booze, chips into drinks, people become robots, lure people into Colonia. Hmm. 
<laughs> you think you think <laughs> the cyborg Jacques is turning people into uh, beer bots? Is that what's going on? I could see that. Great beer bot conspiracy, I like it. No one's really been looking at Jocks as a mystery. They just take it for granted that, oh yeah, there's just this cyborg bartender out there who <laughs> formed his own bubble. Like, nothing suspicious about that. <laughs> yeah, and is it, it's the only cyborg in the whole universe, is it? I don't know. It's like it, this, sort of, yeah. just this one guy there. So are there more cyborgs? That's I think crazy. he's maybe the so most it... famous one, but I'm, I'm sure that, like, like they're, they're like cybernetic implants. It's just you know we haven't like if you, if you notice in your hollow me and hold on I'll show you as soon as I yeah. get, get docked. You can have cybernetic eyes. My guy has one uh, spatula. Has oh yeah yeah. One cybernetic yeah. eye. So technically that is um, I can show you in camera mode. Can I zoom in real close? Oh wait the the, the only cyborg in the game is like an alcoholic depressive sort of bartender. <laughs> <laughs> just like, drinks drinks is nice so I can't, I can't deal with this lonely <laughs> so lonely yeah. like this is a poor cybernetic guy he's not, not, not only the only <laughs> cyber uh, guy in the entire galaxy he's also like stranded out there in Colonia <laughs> um, yeah, yeah 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 where did it follow me there's so many menus now I get so confused but yeah you have cybernetic um, enhancements now again it's like you know uh, I don't know if you watched the um, the expanse but there was some cool stuff there about um, talking about cybernetic arms, and of course, in the Star Wars universe, um, uh, there are, you know, remember Luke Luke Skywalker lost his hand and got a cybernetic hand. You can see there that little eye is cybernetic. The irony is, of course, the scar is on the other eye. It makes people wonder. I get letters about that. I get yeah. people emailing me, being like, "What the <laughs> hell is this about?" I tell them, "I can't tell you because it's uh, confidential information." Uh, yeah. yeah. Hey, 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 hey! Get some water. Stop, oh, get some water. Get some water? Get some water. For the, for the community goal? <laughs> Alright, I'm looking for <laughs> computer, computer components. There is onion head at this station. Hmm, interesting. Uh, computer components? Uh, 1400. Okay, wonderful. We will buy all that we can buy. Though I wonder, maybe we should do another commodity after this and see if that has more profit, but... Like I said, I don't really care about yeah. the profit, I just care about the, the, the percentage again, that FSD. And many said, here in Texas, I got guns, so no mandates. Woo! I get to live normally here. <laughs> five, five minutes later, he's like, uh, sorry, I had to go out back and shoot someone. <laughs> there, was, there was a man in a mask, a COVID mask, trying to get into my property. Got to bury him in the desert. But yeah, it, it would be nice to have no mandates, but, uh, you know, it is what it is. Uh, uh, it doesn't seem to uh, affect me too much anyway, because it's a bit of a bit of a hermit uh, in, in, in life anyway, so it's kind of like, COVID happened and I'm just like, ha 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 ha, <laughs> I've been preparing for this all my life. Um, yeah, I think if we can get used to a winter of it, you know, and then just in the, in the spring and summer, just have a good time, get out to the gigs and stuff, and then, okay, so the winter's just got to do what we do, you know? And again, we, we only wear masks and a bit of, not much at all over here, I think, so it ain't that hard. It's pretty easy. Yeah, I mean, I went to a couple concerts. Um, like, obviously, like, we were not locked down for a few months, and so you could go to restaurants and all that sort of stuff. Yeah. And uh, I got to go to two concerts on uh, in December. Uh, one was a band called Lagwagon, um, which is like a <laughs> 90s punk band. That was really cool to see. Um, and the other one was a, a Canadian band called Born Ruffians. And both of them oh, were, wow. like, small venues, like, bar-style venues that were, like, you know, maybe 200, 300 people. And, yeah. you know, like, again, you're drinking beer in there, and no one's really wearing their masks. And I'm just thinking to myself, I'm getting Omicron tonight. <laughs> but, I, <laughs> yeah. you know, I, I've, I've been vaccinated, so, like, it's like, you know, I obviously don't want to go out of my way to get COVID, but you feel a little more comfortable in those scenarios when you know that you've had the vaccine, right? Yeah, um, yeah, totally. Yeah. But I'm just like, man, like, do we have to lock down again? Like, the toilet paper is going to go out of stock again. I'm going to have to wipe my butt with, you know, fucking, <laughs> you know, like, baby wipes or something. I don't know. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah. It's definitely like, I don't want us to slide backwards, but at the same time, I'm just I like, well, you know. The vaccines I, it, are good, I think. Yeah, I mean, go get your vaccine, get your booster shots and all that crap. But you know what? It's the middle of winter here. It's too fucking cold to go out. I don't want to go outside. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm, totally, if yeah. If we're going to have a lockdown, That's like, do it now. Get it out of the way. And then, like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. open shit up Everyone's for the summer. Everyone's depressed again. in January, aren't they? January's a depressing <laughs> month. He wants us to lock down so we can go, ah, oh, you know. It is um, depressing. I looked at the friggin', uh, you know, the scale in the background, and I'm like, what the fuck have I done? <laughs> <laughs> 
what happened last year? I ruined everything. Uh, I just, you know, yeah. again, it's like being home and eating fucking donuts all the time and, and <laughs> like lack of exercise. Um, I moved last year in the winter as well. And in the old place that I was living, I would take a walk in a, in a local park like every single day religiously. And I don't yeah. like, necessarily have a local park here. It's like, so I haven't been like walking as much. So I'm like, this year I got to use my space legs more and go out and fucking run around. Yeah, and I've, I've been lazy this year. On, on Earth. Um, and then he's like, it's cute how you're happy to be allowed to do things. <laughs> well, you know, it's like, look, at the end of the day, like, you know, you could you could do things if you want. It's just uh, it fucking yeah, global pandemic. You know, it's a once in a lifetime opportunity to finally embrace your inner introvert and just like, <laughs> you know, yeah. everyone else I, has I, to I've do it too. I've got a law My father was 88 and my parents are 83. So, yeah. you know, I, I don't do lots of things because if I go and see them and I get it, I'll feel so bad, you know? And okay. so that's the only thing that stops me. I go and do what I want to, really, but I do care about my parents and lots of things. So that's if that's cute, yeah. then I'm a really cute guy, you know what I mean? So, yeah. Yeah, and look, I think that's that's it, right? It's like it, it, it's not about like what you as an individual want. It's about like yeah, the, like yeah. The, the vulnerable in society. It's health, isn't it? Right. Like yeah, the, yeah. the odds are that most people, like probably eighty percent of the world, you're gonna get COVID, and you're gonna be fine. It's especially Omicron, which is like more infectious yeah, yeah, but less true. dangerous. But why why take yeah. the risk, right? Why t why be dangerous? Um, may I stop you <laughs> right there? <laughs> uh oh. Can I ask, <laughs> Uh oh. What you got? Uh, you should take take some water because you are talking non-stop. <laughs> okay, are you working for the water industry? <laughs> yes. Take a sip and stop talking for a while. And I will tell you a story from, from one of my family members, should I say, and from a country I cannot tell you. Mysterious. You okay. gotta understand me. <laughs> There's another, another thing I cannot say. So, there he goes. So <laughs> this family member is studying in a city. Okay. In the college. Okay. There was a lockdown. So... The city official decided, okay, we need to have zero cases, no matter what, before the January out. Okay. So they drove, one of the thing they did, fuck, I have, I'm having trouble connection. So they drove all the uh, stu college students, especially from outside the place, to quarantine. Basically, they use buses, coaches, round, round and round. Okay. Only allowed to carry uh, two items of luggage. Basically, a backpack and a case. Lug luggage case. Okay, like a carry-on. First thing they did is they store all their all their classes, so no classes for all of them, no matter what. Okay. Second thing is they, they round it up for a test. The city is quite cold. It, it was cold in negative uh, 10 below zero. 10 below zero, that's, Canadian, that's called Canadian t-shirt weather. Yeah, but it's not Canadian. It's not Canada, so they run them up for tests. People are in outside, not in a building. Mm -hmm. Imagine uh, the tests are like waiting in line outside for whatever in a tent. Uh, in a very long queue, yeah. people are not keeping distance. It's, they are literally shoulder to shoulder. Yeah. No, it's no social. Yeah, they run in a. Okay, okay. So in a in a tent for testing. Yeah. In a bus yeah. basketball court. But that feels like a recipe uh, of how the, to get COVID. Like that's like, you want to catch yeah. COVID? Get in the yeah. line outside in the cold, <laughs> with no social yeah. distancing, yeah. with all the other people waiting for COVID tests. Like, 
That's a recipe for disaster. Yes. And uh, <laughs> this person has told me uh, they waited for five hours in the cold. Holy! They only given one bottle of water. Two hundred and fifty milliliter water. Damn. Nothing. Some try to escape. They were beaten by those. Uh oh. Hold on. Uh, I, I wouldn't say uh, police people. I would say those are thugs, local thugs employed I'm by the it. authority. Hmm. They were beaten. Some yeah. in the city were under lockdown, so they are. I'm gonna boil you so up. Under lockdown, so they can They are not allowed to leave their home. I mean, literally, you are grounded in your house. You are jailed in your house. You are. Yeah. You are not allowed to leave, no matter what. Okay. There was, uh, there was someone who who says having a bad case of chest pain, and um, having a bad case of chest pain. Yeah. And call the. For the emergency number, oh, the jackass going to interrupt. One twelve. A couple times, call one twelve to one. Uh, a couple times, nobody pick up the phone. They 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 were called directly to the hospital on the phone book. Yeah. They were refused by three hospitals. What? Oh, damn it! Hold on. Uh, sorry, I'm being interdicted by this jerk off again. I'm gonna just submit again. I'm gonna this really annoying NPC here. Oh no, a pregnant woman. They still get after. This guy, Nilaman. Baby, because yeah, one one second, Zika. I gotta focus on this stupid NPC who just won't get off my damn back. I'm gonna. Have, I, I I I swear <laughs> to God, I'm gonna murder this man. What is he in? A crate phantom? Okay, actually, maybe I will run away. Um, <laughs> like if he's like a viper or something like that, I swear to God, I will turn around and smush you. I mean, you 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 could fit a fighter bay, I guess. The what? Fighter bay. Fighter bay. Uh, yeah, but you know, I I'd rather have the extra cargo space or the shields. Like I was thinking about doing a fighter bay, but like the reality is that by the time you deploy your fighters, that guy's gonna get your shields down, right? The only reason I have the shields is just to buy me enough time to, to um, get away by awake. And, like, you know, then you're going to lose your, your fighter, right? So it's kind of like, you would do a fighter if you're planning to, like, actually engage in combat. But I've kind of specced uh, the T9 to be more like, like, all the weapons that I have are mines. And everything is just about, like, okay, I will submit and then run the hell away. And, of course, this NPC has followed me right to the station. And he's still throwing threats at me, even though we're both at the station. Come at me, bro. Come at me, let this station take you out. <laughs> this station will not appreciate. I am in the fire zone. Come at me. Oh, that's right, he's running away. You can see him turning around there. <laughs> the yellow bastard. These NPCs, they, they, they have a mean uh, mean talk, but when it comes down to the actual fight, they're just, uh, they don't got their heart in the game. They always go right at the station, don't they? And they just don't go, oh, not, they, they never give in. <laughs> One this day. Neat looking station. I would love to just like, like, I, I wish you could like a bounty hunter like would interdict you and then another one interdicts you and you get like six or seven to follow you to the station and then just like get those station yeah, yeah. on them. Just juke them all uh, that way. That would be pretty cool. But I think it's like, once, you know, like you don't get more than one bounty hunter at a time. Oh, what up, Reese Toward? Torwad. Cool, cool, cool thumbs up to you too. <laughs> so this is actually what our second run and uh npcs have been all over my butt but none of them have been able to actually uh insert any uh, oh, hold on i just bumped into the mill slot um none of them have been able to insert any uh foreign objects into my butt they've just been all over it but they get nothing uh but so far not seeing um a lot of like player gankers or whatever so that's cool though. Yeah, so smart, they've all gone now, so it's pretty. Don't drink it. 
<laughs> yeah, no, yeah, it'd be hundreds of them. <laughs> yeah, my point is on the previous topic is yeah, I I get we we should do our part of preventing the big uh preventing the thing. So, but okay, I was from a place where people are have little freedom. So, mm. so to speak. Yeah, yeah. So taking that freedom away is really massive, sort of thing. It's not about taking away. <laughs> it's because it's more about people don't realize they can do this or do that. They thought every every place they go, every place in the world, are the same to them. Mm. Yeah. I.e. say you you don't have. Uh, what do you what do you call a uh, wagon? What what do what do you call a uh, you you can open a a, a newspaper? Nobody will, will will prevent you from doing that. What, what censorship? What that? I forgot censorship. Yeah, you got priv pri and privacy. Oh well, yeah. Oh yeah, but we don't oppress. Yeah, That's oppression. One, yeah. one thing they. Okay, so say, okay, I will have a, I will say something very controversial. Now, mm -hmm. three, two, one, go. I think the whole <laughs> lockdown thing uh, is becoming a tool of uh, author authoritarian regime to limit freedom. It's it's a means to limit freedom, like i.e. boiling the frog with warmer and warmer water. Mm -hmm. When people are getting used to it, they will not say, say anything against it, i.e. So, this person has, has bought a basket of uh, food. Yeah, they were meat and vegetable and uh, some bread inside. Okay. So this basket is about the same size of your normal house. Uh, I mean, supermarket basket. Okay. But it costs them oops two hundred or more US dollar of equivalent local money. Two hundred dollar okay, for that it. basket. Hmm. What it means that is was a maneuver. People are saying against you. Okay. Just starve them to death. Just starve them. Star them Wait, what? What are you saying? Starve out. people? What are you talking yeah. about? Yeah. Because of the lockdown, they don't allow people to go outside. Well, that, well not. That, that's not. That's. Well, that's at least not in every country. Yeah, yeah, like I was gonna say, in Canada, the lockdown is basically you can't go indoor dining, but you can get. Uh, it's it's the cow talking there, Reese. Um, you can yeah. get, uh, you can yeah. go to the grocery store, you can I'm, go wherever that you need to go. It's not like a full, full, um, lockdown. No, no. Right? But, That's obviously, like... you know, it's like people going, like, I mean, look, I went to a concert in December, and it's like 200 people not wearing masks, and like, you know, if one person in that crowd had COVID, that would spread to all 200 people. Then those 200 people go home, and then they visit their parents, and their vulnerable parents will get sick, right? So, you know, I think you have to do something, and I think, like, as much as like yeah like freedom is important right but like there are speed limits right you you can't drink and drive that's not oppression from freedom that's like part of the rules of I the agree society with you. right and yes, the thing about covid is like yeah the thing about covid is like it's 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 got to be temporary right there has to be an end date to it and that has to be dictated by science right it can't be dictated by like okay, okay. what we want or what the government's no, no. um want it's got to be coming stop, from stop, stop. medical and scientific communities right yeah yeah at least in that's my, my, my fear that's my fear I'm, I'm i'm afraid it's going to exist along with us like yeah and, and look i think that's a that's, that's a totally valid fear is like you know that the governments get used to this idea and oh, this is a way to control but like in reality though the, you know the, the hope is that that it's dictated by science like to me like i even think like you know like like a scientific oligarchy might be the best form of government there is where like you know an educated yeah. scientific community looks at data and makes decisions 
based on things. So they go, okay, like there's global warming. We know that climate change is an issue. Therefore, we need to adjust our like society and economy to like respect yeah, yeah, yeah. respect the laws of physics, right? Like we can't say, well, you know, <laughs> we want to be yeah. free and we don't care if like the entire world will uh, get flooded by water and Kevin Costner will oh. go around drinking his own pee in water world. You know what I mean? <laughs> like, like, <laughs> like, you know, so it's kind of like- I agree with you, so. But look, I but think it, you missed my point. But I think you, you make a good I point that like governments point. out there are like you know again like like it gives them a tool that again is very tempting to use right, um, and definitely here yes. in in, in, in Canada and I'm in, in the province of Ontario, uh, people are very frustrated with the government right now because it's kind of like been swinging back of like we're in lockdown now we're not in lockdown now we're back in lockdown now we're not in lockdown now we're back in lockdown and it's like okay like like what are we doing here right like and it's so frustrating. Um, and to me, it's like, okay, like, like oh. I am hoping that the politicians are, are doing this because of, like, the medical community, the scientific. I will believe a scientist who knows what they're talking about before I'll believe Whereas any in the, in the In the UK, we have no lockdown at all, though. We just have a mm. vague thing. Of, oh, if you go in a shop, you have to wear a mask. That's about it, sort of thing. Yes. And the thing is, though, a third of our hospital staff are ill, and so our hospitals can hardly run, and people are having mm. heart attacks, and they're saying, can you get a taxi to the hospital because there's no ambulances? Right. So it's that bigger thing of, like, you know, COVID clogs everything up. So it's it, it's it's cool to say, yeah, I'll do whatever I want to, but when your hospitals don't work, if you do cut your finger off with a saw or something being free then you might be a bit annoyed if you can't just use the basic things of a healthcare I mean so they've I got mean, balance I mean, with those things up if you cut yeah. your finger off with a saw <laughs> there's a yeah. lot to be more than annoyed probably yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah it might be a little bit tetchy I think, yeah yeah well look I, I think everyone in the world uh wants this shit to end it's just a case of like okay, yeah like one is it know. safe to do so and i don't think there's and, you know, minus the psychopaths out there, I don't think anyone wants to, to go around and, like, hurt other people, um, except for, yeah. you know, uh, <laughs> you know, again, uh, those NPC gankers, right? Um, They're the worst ones. They're always out there trying to get you. <laughs> it's a tough time, though. I think the last couple of years have been, like, a huge psychological strain, and... Uh, it, it's just like like I, I get that feeling too it's like you're really squirreling it's like when is this going to end and even when it does end and they say everything's cool oh. you don't even need masks anymore I think like there, there are some kids that have grown up in lockdown and like the rest of their life yeah, is yeah. going to be affected by this right like that isolation um, I think like hurts how people are social like there was already a problem with yeah. people spending too much time on their phones and like being like very screen oriented and this is only like yeah. advanced that right and hey, um, yeah. great for games like Elite. People are probably buying more arcs because <laughs> what else is there yeah. to do? Um, but yeah, you yeah, know, totally. even when we get that full return, I think like even I'll be psychologically affected and like think twice before going out, right? Um, yeah, it's kind of some effect, isn't it, I think. Yeah. Again, my my, my so... youngest is ten, and she's you know she's quite affected by it. She doesn't like going out and stuff still because even because you know as in the last lockdown there was a giant poster outside our door with a with an old person with a mask on dying and it's like and she was like what's that and then kind of trying to just try to you know be cool about it but it's it's hard isn't it you know? yeah man but i'm sure we'll be all right i mean but we'll get drunk more <laughs> it's like when you buy a pack of cigarettes and then they got these like crazy warning labels on them that tell you oh, all man, the terrible yeah. things it's gonna do to you and it's just like you know they have pictures over here really <laughs> bad pictures it's like, oh, dude. Yeah. And it's like, okay, I get it, it's bad, but you don't have to, like, give me nightmares, you know? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but, yeah, it's, a, you know, it's it's been a tough time, but you know what? That's where it's like, hey, at least, really? we, ha at least we have Elite Dangerous, right? And can, yeah. you, can you imagine if this was, like, pre-computers, like, 1930s, and we had this similar lockdown? Like, people would go insane. Um, yeah, at least we live in an age where, like, <laughs> at least we can connect to other people through the magic of the internets. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and you know, yeah. at least there's that tool that kind of is helping me get through, right? It's just, like, having that contact with other people and the ability to still be at home but do things. You know, that's, yeah. that's like, yeah. just something that I'm very grateful for. Yeah, it's quite amazing, really. Um, yeah, I think you know people get bored of it, but it's amazing that you can sit and chat to people around the whole world or chat to your friends without having to go and see them. And it's that's the coolest side of technology, which is really come to the front, I think. 
Yep. Uh, we all miss the real, we all miss simple, but it's good fun. You have, you have a laugh, and then you have, you have real experiences, and that's another cool thing in Elite is you get experiences. I mean, until the robots take games. over. When the yeah, robots yeah, take yeah. over, then we're done. Oh shit! I must have bought yeah. all the computer components here. There's only two left. Um, yeah. Okay. I'm running out, aren't I? I guess we gotta find some other. Yeah, that's why I, I say you should go multi hopping. Multi hopping. Is that, is, is that like looking at uh, like changing one, commodities? It, Right. You need multiple hops to fill fill out your cargo. Oh, uh, see. These billionaires are too clever at this trading mark, aren't they? <laughs> I tell you, man. The, the, the... Yeah, I've done trading before, and I hate it. Every. <laughs> it is honestly like elite trading is like the worst. Okay, but it was the on. last. Um, it was the last elite I got. I think was trading because I just couldn't stand it. Let's... Okay, so. We can go to Wolf 359. Someone oh, no. on chat says, But when the wealthy decide to kill you, it's over. Spanish flu in 1919 was. Okay, Spanish flu, flu is 1918. Yeah? Get, get your history right. The original pandemic. Well, So the thing is. Yeah. <laughs> it's not. It's not about. Whether or not the wealthy decide to kill you, it's, it's more like the wealthy is not affected by it. In fact, the wealthy is one, profiting from it directly or indirectly. Okay, so I have a theory. It's, don't call me on that. So, <laughs> you, know, you know the stock market, right? The uh, American stock market is mostly owned by the wealthy 30 ish percent. So the Bilderbergs. Basically, hmm. if uh, if okay, my economic is not very good, but I think on my test book it says when the stock market go up, goes up, the wealthy benefit the most. This is true. Hmm. But when it gets goes down, it's the uh, poor. Poor people who suffer. That's true, because the price of goods and stuff it's gets not affected. It's about right? everything participates yeah. in the market. All get a benefit. So it's more like, say you are running that city I was telling about. You are not allowed everyone li leaving your, their home. Guess who suffers the most? I say it's not the rich people well that's it if you they live if you live in a 27 room back. mansion then hey leaving your home you don't need to because you got a mcdonald's in the basement and a bowling alley you know what i mean so yeah it's it's definitely true that yeah like like and honestly i moved last year because with the pandemic with being stuck at home i was living in a very small apartment and i'm just like i need to find a place that has more space and like a balcony just so that i don't yeah, go yeah. stir crazy yeah. right like that was my main reason for moving so, so basically, it's like this. If then let's say one of the people I was telling living in a big apartment complex, right? Complex. They have gated. It's a gated community, right? Okay. Like so a permit the authority lock. A permit lock system. Locked down the main gate of the building and the gate of the compound. They literally have nowhere to go. The only thing they have is electricity, water, and internet. Nothing else. It's really all you need, but <laughs> well, they are literally toilet paper. starving to death. Starving I mean, to death. Yeah. Why not? Yeah, no, it's so, a, definitely like you know. It, it depends on where you where you live, and and certainly I think like uh, my like, my main point is all, yeah. all this story I tell you is zero cases is not realistic. At all, it's just a, uh, it's just just a fancy little uh, elevator talk. You you could brag about as a politician. Mm, yeah. my city has zero cases. Yeah, so what? Yeah, I there, mean, there are many different ways to interpret the zero cases. Uh, the word zero cases, i.e. you don't have anyone in fact infected. Or or you you have but you don't report that. 
well, that's it, right? Is is there's like there's like however many cases are being reported, like how many people have COVID but don't go to a hospital and report it, right? Um, and certainly with with the Omicron, which is like more flu-like symptoms. I could see a lot of people just not bothering to report it, right? Like, I know several people at work who got COVID, and they're like, yeah, I was going out for jogs while I had it. And I'm like, oh, did you get a COVID test? And they're like, no, I didn't bother. I'm like, how do you even know you have COVID? <laughs> yeah. You know, but it's just kind of like, it is becoming like a little bit of a, a, a weird, uh, diffuse thing where people go, yeah, I got COVID. And it's like, but you didn't get a test, so you don't, you don't know, right? And you yeah, didn't report yeah. it, so you're not showing up in the numbers. It's all, you know, again, it's, it, but you know, it's like at the end of the day, yeah, like, um, if you're wealthy and living in a mansion, it's a lot easier to get through these kind of things than, uh, than whatever, right? And, you know, at the end of the day, if Bill Gates, Elon Musk, and Jeff Bezos wanted to build a, a, a station in space and release a biochemical <laughs> agent and reduce the population and repopulate the earth with their, uh, with their own semen, uh, they could do so, um, just like the plot of Moonraker, uh, and no one would be able to stop them. Not even, uh, not even um, uh, uh, Batman. Yeah, on that. Did you watch that movie? Don't look. Up I did. Netflix, I, I did. It was pretty fun. I liked it. It's a good yeah, example of just like that. It's a great movie. Yeah, it's satirical. It's fun. It's it's not a good movie, but it's a good movie. It's okay. It it's like it's. Of- it's a, it's a fun little movie. It's nothing like oh, this is gonna be my favorite movie. But like, it's it's fun satirical commentary on just how fucking dumb our society is. <laughs> it's but, a critique of uh, media, I guess, mostly yeah, media. Yeah. How they used to downplay things to I love not it. hurt your their uh, baseline. I love the Leonardo DiCaprio it's thing where it's like they gave, they gave a little... It's a movie by movie standards. It's okay. It, it's like but, um, but... it's like The Big Short or, or like movies like The Big Short or um, mm. uh, Wolf of Wall Street or whatever where it's kind of like, you know, it, it's like, it's a good no. movie. It's in, it's engaging, but like, you know, you'll forget about it in a couple of years, but you watch it and you're like, yeah, like that was fun. That was a good movie. Yeah, it's cool that made of it I as well. Think... It, it just needs some more oven time. It needs more time to work on. It could be the next Idiocracy. Ah, if you want to compare a ethical movie. And you know what's funny? Idiocracy got totally screwed. Um, like, Idiocracy was... Like, I remember when that came out, quote-unquote, in theaters, in, in at least on, uh, in Canada, there was only one theater showing it for three days. Like, it got such a limited theatrical release that it kind of bombed and it didn't, like people forgot about it and it slowly, slowly became a cult classic. Um, and, you know, thankfully got the respect it deserves, you know, over time, but it's a really funny movie. If you haven't seen Idiocracy out there, oh. I highly recommend it. Good Mike Judge movie. Mm. With Luke okay. Wilson. Sorry, but you should drink Rondo. Instead, don't, don't drink water, because water is for the toilet. <laughs> I, I say drink some Lavian brandy. Drink drink a cup of Lavian yeah. brandy and wash it down with some Centauri Mega Gin. And then, yeah. and then you know, you know, finish it off with a little bit of water if you want. If you want to hydrate yourself. But we, we, don't need, uh, we don't need water. We wear these fancy spacesuits that just, you know, pump fluids into us and uh, out of us. Because I've not seen a bathroom in, in my spaceship. Um, so I was thinking, you know, earlier someone said that um, maybe uh, salvation is a Thargoid human sort of mm. co- uh, combination sort of thing. I was thinking because the, the Guardians are an inert thing. I wonder if if they start to find, I don't know, if they find him, would they come back to life? Would they sort of come back to their? I don't know what the story of the Guardians. If they are just totally gone, or if they're waiting to get rid of people again so, so what what what, what cool. i guess like yeah. the idea was the guardians were like this sort of like tribal species that eventually mm. invented this giant ai network and, and it killed they're, they're, them, didn't it? yeah like yeah. like essentially the ai turned and like exterminated them or whatever like there were different sects of the guardians i believe they kind of split where one was like more technology focused the other one wanted to be go become more tribal 
I would imagine yeah, that yeah. at some point, like maybe there is some remnants of that more tribal anti-technology guardian species out there in a permit locked area for future content sometime hmm. 20 years from now. Yeah. But the suspicion is that <laughs> the, the, the guardians created the AI network to fight the Thargoids. And it's very yeah, yeah. possible that that AI network, which you can see kind of like fragments of it in the Sentinels that guard the Guardian site, could still be out there. Um, and that is definitely something where I, I think, like, if we're going to get Guardians, it would probably be the Guardian AI um, as a complement or sort of like, you know, the Thargoids being your organic biological foe and the Guardian AI being your mechanical technological foe. I could see that being a really Ooh. good mesh. And hey, maybe at some point later on we'll find like the Lost Guardian tribe and, and you know, that could be maybe a friendly alien species to interact with. Um, one can only hope. Uh, I, would, I would love, a, like, you know, I'd love like a, some friendly, or just a few more things that would be amazing in the game, I think. A bit more complex in depth, like people who are like, you could really trade with for different things. Because it's, I remember when all the garden stuff was found, you could find all these amazing garden artifacts, but they were worth yeah. like about a thousand credits. And it's like, this is the biggest thing ever, isn't it? Really? Oh, I know, we it's found like. Our life. Alien, it's like oh, well. oh, you found these alien <laughs> urns. Yeah, whatever. I'll give you like 50 bucks for the pawn shop. Yeah. Like, I'm Maybe sure some grandma will buy this. And she'll put it on top of her dresser as a nice little ornament, right? It's like, this is yeah, like yeah, yeah. this is like the discovery of alien life, man. This is important yeah. shit. This this shit belongs in a museum. Yeah, yeah totally. <laughs> but I, I would love to see. I would love to see friendly aliens. I would love to see the Thargoids split into two factions: one that wants to eat humanity, the other that wants to eat with humanity and dine with us. Um, and, and I would love to see yeah. like docking with an alien starport and like what yeah, do they yeah. do for trade and what kind of missions would they offer? I would love that. Um, and you know, in, in, in um, I want to say in like uh, the earlier Elite games, there were references to like uh, uh, like a cat-like alien species, almost like a Kilrathi sort of um, All right. uh, cool, alien. Yeah. Like I think like, and of course we have the Soontil relics. Uh, which are yeah. uh, on the planet Soontil, not the system Soontil, but um, they are evidence of a different alien species. Uh, there was apparently also an alien okay. relic on Mars, on which mine. I don't think is Thargoid in origin. It might it might be Thargoid or Guardian, but, you know, there should be mm -hmm. more than just, like, if you think about it, and this is why I'm very excited about the James Webb Space Telescope, which... Yeah, um, the amount of stuff they can see is insane, isn't Yeah, it? man. I mean, compared to Hubble, we're going to yeah. get some crazy cool stuff with that. And the amazing thing is, you know, as they go out and uh, some guy named Robo Baggins, NPC, love it. Uh, he's a relative of Bilbo, <laughs> no doubt. Um, but, you know, as the James, like, so, you know, as we've explored space, you know, at first it was kind of like, yeah, like, you know, life seems to be rare and there's not a lot of stuff in the habitable zone. Like, it's a very specific condition for life. But as we get better and better at, at, at um, finding exoplanets, we find more and more in the habitable zone. Like the Trappist system has yeah. like three planets that are in the habitable zone. And, and there's finding... all the stuff that's on, the finest start now, the, the earliest life on Earth was around the vents in the sea. But yeah. they were around heat sources. They weren't based on the land in light of air oxygen. Like volcanic, oxygen. Uh, volcanic vents. So, so we always think, oh, we need to have these certain things for life, but you basically need to have volcanism, basically. That seems to be a, a good starting and point. And look, uh, there's... You can have. The Thargoids, you get proteins. The Thargoids yeah. are from ammonia-based systems. Again, like like we're a carbon-based form of life. There could be silicate forms of life, or you know, different different yeah. versions of life that are out there that would be totally alien, crystalline entities living in space, space wells, etc. But the point being yeah. is kind of like as we get better bacon and better at viewing people. the hmm? bacon people, bacon. And I, I'll, yeah, that would probably. Well, I mean, like, I think those are called pigs. But uh, yeah. if if we did find an alien species that tasted yeah. like bacon, we would wipe them out so quickly. Um, I know. Well, I was thinking, is it um the giant uh, giant tortoises apparently taste really really tasty, and that was the thing when they bring them back apparently to Britain from the great exhibitions. Mm -hmm. The sailors kept eating these giant tortoises because they were so tasty, mm -hmm. and so they brought twelve back, and they, they none of them made it back because they ate all of them on the way. So they must have been there because long long journey back from Africa sort of thing, or yeah, South yeah. America with these amazing tortoises and they're all just the sailors go oh so just, just have one more tonight so they <laughs> eat these things it's just terrible like these poor creatures oh, yeah yeah, yeah some, just some fun aliens to eat would be great you know I, mean? I would eat them uh, I would eat an alien if, if it was like ethical but but like yeah I mean like this is the thing is like there, there's all these um, 
you know, like, like there's all these possibilities, and the more that we, like, the James Webb Telescope is so much better than Hubble, and it's going to show yeah, amazing, yeah. amazing images. Like, one thing I was reading about was just how, um, like, the Hubble would operate at, at like warm temperatures, and so you often get interference from its own thermal energy. Yeah, yeah. The James Webb yeah. Telescope has this shield that allows it to operate at like negative two hundred and thirty-two degrees Celsius. It will see so much further and so much more clearer. And we're going to start seeing that. Yeah, you know what? As they look into systems more and more, they're finding more and more systems are common to have planets, and more and more planets yeah, yeah. are falling into the habitable zone. Uh, we may find out that the galaxy is teeming with life, though most of it probably is just little patches of bacteria that will go around and scan uh, yeah, yeah. just so that we can upgrade our uh -huh. um, exploration rank or whatever, right? <laughs> um, <laughs> but the point being is like, yeah, like, like there's got to be like a galaxy teeming with life. It can't just be like tier three species. But, you know, the species that can get to space travel, let alone like, you know, uh, um, interplanet, inter, you know, stellar travel is probably pretty rare. But... Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, I believe in UFOs. I believe there's enough credible evidence there that, like, I think aliens have visited Earth, uh, probably yeah, yeah. all throughout our history. Um, they probably come as a curiosity and go, look at these fucking monkeys. Like, this is fucking hilarious. <laughs> we are, yeah, yeah, yeah. no doubt, a form of entertainment, and every once in a while they want to... Oh, so talking monkeys. <laughs> <laughs> every once in a while they want to they want to pull a monkey into their ship and uh, probe their butthole. Some sort of power defense thing for so long. Everything I see is monkey now. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it's it's um you know I, okay, I think the, so... the James Webb Telescope I think is gonna really just like like uh, I can't wait to see the first images from it. I think it's gonna be beautiful to look at. Uh, we're gonna see a lot more of the cosmos. It's a very exciting time yeah. to be alive, and uh, it uh, is it's cool. only a few days before I guess the telescope finally unfurls. My thought is, oh yeah, um, we're having some issue with the images because they're going to need the government to go in and scrub out all the aliens. Um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, um, <laughs> no. <laughs> but I, I am really looking forward to seeing some cool, like, like just beautiful pictures of the galaxy because, like, the Hubble Deep Space Field, like the big famous image from Hubble, was That's they point mental. they pointed it at yeah. the darkest part of the sky and just saw it just cluttered with galaxies and. The James Webb is just so much bigger and we'll be able to get just deeper, more rich images. It's going to be if you're a space fan, which if you're if you play Elite and you're not a space fan, what the <laughs> fuck are you how did you do that? How did you get into this game? Um like it's an exciting time. I'm 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 stoked for it, man. Um, yeah, I only play for the DNA scanning, so I love DNA. <laughs> That's I, 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 I joined the game for trading. I like economies and yeah. trading factions. Yeah. <laughs> um, well, I thought it was really brave yeah, and like, putting all this life in. That was quite a big step, I thought, for the game to do. Yeah, yeah. Which is cool, because it, it opens the door that the life is a lot more abundant than we thought it was before. And that, that's in the game, that seems like it's, it's, it's almost everywhere, which is quite cool. So the chances for more things to happen is it's open now, isn't it, really? Man... But yes, I, I, I agree. And, and, and Reese, Reese Turward, what if in ED we discovered a peaceful alien civilization? Yes, the player base would exterminate it. <laughs> I, I, I guarantee, I guarantee <laughs> yeah. you, Harry Potter would come back, somehow make his way back from the game and ban it, and they would just blow the shit out of these guys. <laughs> if the BGS yeah, yeah. allowed it, right? And I have a feeling that Frontier yeah. probably probably would, would, you know, if they put all the work of putting in a cool alien race, they probably wouldn't, like like let people do that but but i guarantee you people would try because that's just like that's humanity yeah. and especially when it's in a game i mean come on like you have to try. permit lock themselves straight away when they after about two days they permit lock themselves they're right no one else allowed <laughs> in <to us>. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I would love to see um friendly aliens in the game or just like even just like minor species maybe there's just like one little primitive species that just has one station on one planet they don't have interstellar travel but you can visit them yeah. and like they'll you know um pay for goods but because like they don't they're not part of the palace federation they're not humans they don't have like credits to give you they give you like weird shit that uh modifies <laughs> your ship i don't know like like yeah, yeah. you know some cool different creative stuff right um, it would be cool yeah, if we yeah, figured out what, yeah. what do the, you know, you bring them a soon tail relic and they're like, oh shit, yeah, we're going to give you this crazy engineering. Like we don't have interstellar travel, but we have this crazy, crazy strong armor that we could put on your ship. Right. I'd love stuff like that. Yeah. Man. 
Um, yeah, it would be really cool, wouldn't it? Just add loads of bits. Oh my make, god. Make that game have more regions and that sort of thing would be great. I just, I love, there's an NPC named Peter Pringle. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Peter Pringle. Peter Pringle. Will this take long? I've got a schedule to keep. Well, <laughs> slow down there, Peter Pringle. That's the greatest game <laughs> in the world. Okay, so apparently all these places, I think you're right, uh, uh, Minarni, that, that um, Inara is a little bit out of date because I'm finding all these... Uh, uh, Told you so. <laughs> all these systems are... are we don't do every hope you get. Yeah, it's nothing to sell. Yeah, yeah. I only got like... Before. I've got like what? Uh, two computer components and 31 cooling units. Um, but what's the other commodity we got to find? Cera composite ceramics or whatever? So thermal. Gonna, uh, yeah, I've got the thermal ones and I've got the, the computer components. I'm going to go find um, some composite ceramics. It looks like there are some in Red Dot. Which is I'm holding ceramic now and every station within 40 light years in which I empty them. Oh, yeah, because this is a pretty popular CG. Like, this is one of the better rewards for any CG. Yeah, right? this is a time where you should really fly a Python right now. Why? Oh, because of the, cause the medium, medium pads? Yeah, medium pad and plus Python travel further than any any of these damn ships. I mean, I'm not going to argue. I love Python. It is one of my favorite ships. In fact, uh, I was very happy that... Uh, uh, I got to do on, on Yamex's channel his Python <coughs> quote unquote review. Uh, I, he allowed me to be, uh, to grace his presence, the great and powerful Yamex, uh, in the Python review. And so that was like, it was like, to me, like, it was like either the Python or the Asp, I think, are the two um, ships that I would have loved to uh, have been in the review on. So I was like very happy about that. Um, but the Python still is one of my favorite ships. Uh, but still, you know, the T9, I think, like, better bang for the buck um, in terms of just like total haulage so I don't have to make so many trips. Furs. Yeah, Reese. <laughs> yeah, if you, uh, yeah, if you're doing community go like this where the items are literally made by the minute, the yeah. Python is millions of times better than any of these large ships. The, the, the idea is you need to land, take off, land and take off multiple times. Yeah. It gets slow. Yeah, no, it's I don't. It's not about how, how much you can hold now. It's, it's about how fast you can go and where you can land. That's true. Definitely, like, the large landing pads that will take out any outposts. It, it really does reduce where you can go. But at the same time, it might balance out if you can carry double... If you can carry twice as much cargo as a python, essentially making two trips into one, that can balance it out, right? And that's part of the that's part of the yeah, meta strategy of elite. That's like the trading meta is like those little decisions of like, do I go for like volume or do I go for um, you know sort of like like a, a balanced approach, right? Python I think is more balanced, but the T9 yeah. is more like if you're going for just if pure trade Python volume. Sorry. Yeah, to me, if even if you can only hold about half of the time nine, I guess. If you can jump ten light years further than full, a full tank of a uh, full ship of time nine, uh, I'm doing twelve right now. Twelve if I'm holding seven eighty four tons of it. Yeah. So that's really bad. If if my Python can can hold twenty two still on full, that's a big win. Oh yeah. Yeah, no, I'm, I miss my Python. I, I kind of like, it, it's like, I feel like my journey in Elite has been like different eras are defined by different ships. Like when I was starting out, the Adder was really like what I was all about. I love the Adder. It was a beautiful ship. I love the cockpit. Um, what? No. Yeah, it was cool. Don't you insult the Adder. Don't you insult the Adder. I love the Adder. The Adder is one of my favorite ships. And I just have this beautiful emotional connection to like when I started out playing the mm. game. My little space minivan, you know, my little four-door sedan, adder. Yeah, yeah, cool uh, you know, it, it was versatile enough. I could do a little bit of bounty hunting. It was great for exploration. Good. For oh come mining. on, adder! It's the only ship that is right hand drive. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, eventually you outgrow it. Oh, okay, and then... okay, for real though. Uh, mm -hmm. 
If you are holding ceramic, I suggest you go to uh, System Go Ross 447. I'm at there right now. There are, there are two stations out there selling ceramics. Uh, okay. It's a good, good trip, but the supply is low, but anyway. Well, I'm already here at uh, in the Red Ox station at Wits, uh, Wits Station. I'm going to pick up the haul there, head back to Alcor, and then we can go Ross 447 for the next haul. That might do a little bio break um, after the, after picking up some cargo here. Um, but yeah, so so the Adder was my first ship, and then I kind of did a little bit of flying around in a Viper um, for for like a specific. I remember doing like a specific. Uh, there was like a war zone community goal in the Empire. And I tried the Viper out, but then uh, upgraded from Adder to Cobra. And then the Cobra years, um, that was a great time. The Cobra is an amazing multi-purpose ship. It's an iconic ship in the game. Um, flew the Cobra it's for fast a while. As well, isn't it? yeah. It's fast, it's versatile. The it's got... Ugly. The what? Ugly Cobra. It's a half a pizza. Ugly. <laughs> <laughs> it's half a pizza. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's good it, it is, but I, I think it's a pretty half a pizza. And you know what? I'll take a half a pizza any day. I love pizza. Um, but after the Cobra, then I got into the Asp. And the Asp, I think, was like, the, that was the, the longest I was in a ship for a continuous amount of time. His name is Jerry, by the way. Still got him around. But um, <laughs> uh, the Asp, I think, was a great ship. That's where I started getting into exploration. Um, Asp is also can be spec for combat pretty well, but it's a good, nice, multi-purpose ship. And then from Asp, I went up to Python. And then the Python, I was like, holy shit, this ship is just like my dream ship. Um, it really, you know, anything you want to do with the Python, you can do. It is that beautiful of a ship. Um, and then now I'm in this weird phase where like, okay, I'm, I'm kind of post Python, but I haven't got into like Anaconda or bigger ships. I kind of bounced between like the crate and going back to small ships and the courier, uh, T9 when I need to use it. I'll put together weird builds for T7s, love to jump into a dolphin or an orca. You know, it's like I'm, I'm now like, you know, in a, in a sort of like yeah, not, quite, not quite big ship, but like a lot of different types of ships. You know, I don't have a main squeeze anymore. No, you know, that's the cool thing, I think, in, in a weird way, the, the slowness of the game, because it was hard to make money, it made you really enjoy the small ships. I had a great time in small ships, I think. And a lot of players I make now didn't, they went straight to a Python in, in about a few hours. Yeah. And uh, and the game shouldn't be grindy, but it's something about, like you say, being in love with a little ship and being in those special moments where you go, that was that, that time sort of thing. Mm -hmm. And people go, oh, one guy's chatting, going, why have you got all these ships? So, what's I've flown them all. I've, I've spent a long time in each one trying to mm -hmm. figure out what it's used for, sort of thing, you know? And that, that's the, that was a, a cool part, I think, of the of the old, the, hard, the hard, harsh times. <laughs> the harsh, the hard, the, the dark ages. But like, yeah, yeah. I, I think small ships are still very useful and there, there are definite advantages to being in a small ship depending on the scenario, what you're trying to do. Uh, if you're doing Odyssey yeah. missions or doing on-ground exploration, like, small ships are easier to land. They're a little bit faster. Yeah, they could, I've, you know. I've been back in a Viper since Odyssey came back. So it's a great little ship and it just whizzes around this thing and it's yeah. easy to land and, that's, and it doesn't cost much, I think. And, and, um, and, and they've... Yeah, they've I, They've made it easier, like now you can engineer and get FSD boosters so like the Viper doesn't have a garbage jump range. So like there yeah. are now more yeah. tools that you can do to just kind of make it a little less painful to go back. But I think that, that you know, again, every ship has its own little purpose, right? Yeah. Um, okay. Tell me what's the purpose of Viper Mark IV? <laughs> well, the Viper Mark IV is a conversational <laughs> starting ship. Uh, it is <laughs> It is mainly there to antagonize people and get them bitching about it on the forums. Because <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, you're right. There yeah, are you know definitely a good point. like the ass scout as well. I'm like that ship is a troll. Like that ship is purely in the game <laughs> to like be like why and like people will talk about it for ages, right? Um, maybe one day they'll fix it up and make it actually like really fast or give it huge jump range or whatever. But like yeah, ass scout, Viper Mark IV. I would say like. Why would you get a Type Six when there's a keel back? Uh, you know, there are definitely some ships yeah, yeah. that are like, like, you have a lot of questions about them. <laughs> but yeah, you know, yeah. there's like, you know, what, 32 ships in the game at this point, or however many it is, and you know, like most of them have a pretty clear purpose, or you know, like you can take a Python or a Chieftain or something like that and kind of spec it out for 
either bounty hunting or whatever. Like, you wouldn't go trading in a chieftain, right? I guess you could, but... Could, yeah. But the thing is, I, I'd never been meta-based. I always just get a ship because I like it and try and make it work. And exactly. that's what I kind of like. You know, it's like you can kind of make your own way. And that's, mm -hmm. it's maybe it's not the most efficient thing, but I just kind of, some of the ships, I just like the noise they make, you know? And so then I'll try and make them fit into what I want to do, sort of thing. And again, lots of them look really good in screenshots, and some don't, sort of thing. So I've got a bit higher detail than the ships, which is, which is cool. Hold on a second. Oh, fuck. Sorry, I was looking at imports, yeah, not exports, and I went to the wrong station. And <laughs> I'm like, oh, God damn it. Um, yeah. okay, hold on. Yeah, I went to. I, I was looking at, like, wh where is the best place to buy co these commodities, not to sell them? Hold on. Uh, okay, so. <laughs> the best exports. Filter out carriers. Actually, hold on. There's a carrier <laughs> that's selling 80, but that's not enough for me to. Uh, Get out of bed. Uh, okay, so apparently there is a ground-based facility that sells it that's 100 light years away. Okay. Yeah, unless you do mining, otherwise we always build our carrier. Yeah. Because some mm. say, sometimes it says carrier, uh, carrier sells something, but you. You fly there and discover the, the carrier only accept, uh Yeah. No, I, I, I hate carriers. Um, just like in the sense that like some you can dock with, some you can't. And I wish it was a case where, okay, maybe, maybe just let everyone dock with the carrier, but, um, you know, allow advanced functions like accessing the concourse or something like that be uh, the toggleable thing. Because it is kind of annoying when it's like... Yeah, that, that would be good. Yeah, because it's, it's a little bit annoying to know, like, like, they're in the game, but then, like, you go to one and you find that, oh, yeah, you can't actually do anything on this one. Or at least, you know, at least if you're going to have that, make it more visible, right? Yeah, yeah. I hope with, if they if they can have all the new gun shops on them that you can go there and find some of those rare uh, pre-engineered guns and things, because that would be a good reason to go and drop into yeah. some systems you go to that for and sort of carriers, it'd be good to go and do you look think, at a load to see if you can find it. I don't know if they're going to put that or not. Do you think it'd be a good idea if, like, if I went and bought a gun and then engineered it to, like, tier 5 and modded it and whatever, and then I could sell it for whatever price I wanted? Yeah, but what price would you want for that amount of A time? billion dollars! <laughs> yeah, no, yeah. <laughs> because that's my fucking time! <laughs> yeah, yeah, dude, I want it back! Do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Stop yeah. my life! I would never yeah. do that because the grind is so furiously bad for Odyssey. Like, I really... Yeah. Even just to get, like, one weapon mod or to get, like, um, you know, a grade 5 weapon and then mod it to, to the ninth, like, that takes, like, 30 freaking hours and doing yeah, nothing yeah. else. And... Like, that's why I haven't done a lot of it. Like, the only mods yeah. I've actually got are the ones that I found, like, from where you just visit a random vendor in a backwater system, and you get, like, yeah, a yeah. tier 3 weapon with mods already installed, and I'm like, wow, this gun is worth, like, 35 hours of my time. I will buy that yeah, yeah. <laughs> for $3 million. Yes. But yeah, if, totally. I, if, if yeah, I did all that engineering and I was selling it used, that would be a billion dollars. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, my, my main gripe <laughs> against this engineering stuff they, is that they put basic functions behind the grind wall, I guess, I, is the term I, I made. So grind wall is, is an unreasonable amount of playtime you input for something basic. Yeah. Like a night vision for shoots. Why? Yeah. There's no, no point behind, behind that. It's like, it's like... Okay, so... If you put a, a night vision oh, on the Artemis suit, I'm okay with that. It's an exploration suit. Uh, also function as a, a ninja suit, I'm okay with that. But all suits can do night vision, but you have to grind the fuck power of it in order to have it. It's just stupid. This is a pretty... Yeah, it's hard to It's also the same, same reason why I don't do this. Engineering stuff. It's just not worth my time. I rather play some tower defense game while I'm bored. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, <laughs> but, but if, but I know. Honestly, though, I totally agree with you. It's like when I'm getting more engaged playing fucking Cookie Clicker or Bloons. 
Like, <laughs> like when I'm yeah, yeah. having more fun playing that than a fucking one-to-one space simulator that I that is like my favorite game ever. You fucked up the grind frontier. You fucked it up. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And I do, I do agree. I think, I think that's the worst part of the game. I think that's like, like I, I, I will. Th- there are friends that I would love to play this game with me, and they will never play this game because of that grind. That's, yeah, yeah. That's same how it is. Yeah, that's how it is. I'm a rule four four seven, and it's I, I a big supply. I there's still some four hundred left. 346 cool. left and only one station, so yeah. Happy. Yeah, no, but I, I'll tell you, man. I was doing the uh, uh, the grind to unlock opinion polls to get Kit Fowler because I, yeah. I needed him for my episode, and you know, like, okay, I think it's one thing to say, like, okay, there's this unusually high grind that you know it's going to take you 20 hours to do this just by like traveling around, doing X, Y, and Z, getting these materials from this type of system. But then when you layer RNG on top of that, right? When it's like, okay, yeah, yeah. Not, not only do you have to go to a certain type of system, you have to go to a facility, and then one out of ten times you're gonna find the material that you need. Fuck you, fuck you, Braven. Yeah. Suck my yeah. suck my RNG uh, nipples, you you son of a bitch. Uh, because that is just like a, that is just the, the 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 poking and prodding that like sends me over the edge where I'm like. Like, at least give me a way where it's like, I know, okay, I need to do this thing. I can do step one, two, three, and then yeah, yeah. I know that I've gotten it, right? Yeah, uh, you need to put, like, put a time in, but get the stuff out of it. It's, there's not many shops that I go to and go, oh, if I'm lucky, they'll have a really special orange there, but they might have nothing at all. You know, it's like, it's, I wouldn't go there again. So. Holy but shit, it's, this it's, is a big ass planet. <laughs> oh my God. It's that hard thing of, of building I mean, the in. Is, uh... Yeah, to me the problem is they make grind. The grind is not rewarding at all. I mean, I'm not against grind. I mean, I love grind. I played Diablo three. <laughs> you know, but, but that's so, that, that, everyone hates. And you know what? Yeah, yeah. Grind can but be grind fun if it's Diablo done right. Diablo three fucking yeah. rewarding. It's it's not a grind game. It's a grind. It's a game about grind, but it's not grindy. Why? Because you can level up a character doing end game content in less than five hours. I believe me, I tell you this. But five no, hours but I, I, in I a really, Diablo game. I agree with you though yeah. that like like grind is not a bad thing if it's if it's fun, right? If it's integrated with the yeah. gameplay that you like doing. If it's like okay, I can just go bounty hunt and have like collector limpets follow me around and get all the materials I need cool right but when it's like ridiculous quantities and just there's so many materials and you know oh now i gotta unlock technology brokers and they also require cm composites which i can only buy from certain facilities i have to have those (laughs) in my cargo while i have a certain number of materials and then oh yeah i gotta get data which means i gotta go around scanning wakes and you know it just becomes this point where it's like it's so complex right whereas like diablo you just gotta go out and kill people, and and eventually you're gonna get some cool drops and go like, oh, that's cool. I got some dopamine from that, right? You don't have to do yeah. like like sixteen thousand things, and there's not like <laughs> no system or infrastructure that kind of guides you through it. So I totally get that. Where I'm like, yeah, I don't have an issue with grind per se. It's just like I have an issue with like the way that elite grinds. What the hell is that thing? Are those fleet carriers? It is to me that. Whatever people design this engineering stuff, whether or not it's Raven or not, they they don't have many game design experience, or or simply they don't play enough games. If you play World of Warcraft or other similar MMO, I mean, for a couple of years, you would not make such a mistake. Yeah, I mean, it's not rewarding. I don't know what it is because, like, I don't, I don't, I don't have inside scoop on Frontier, and I, you know, I don't know much about game design in and of itself. But you know, you gotta wonder if it's like there, there are there people at the top of the elite chain that are like, we must make them suffer, we must make the players <laughs> grind and suffer. They cannot have fun. If they are having fun, then we are wasting our time. <laughs> you know, but uh, yeah, yeah, you know, uh, bringing it's hard. In I think it's wine, hard. I it's probably hard, yeah. Because yeah, the, 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 the old main game problem was... of elite games, I think, if you are not 
flying the spaceship, everything is going as hell. Yeah. Yes, everything. I mean everything. Right now it's literally everything is going to hell if we are not in your spaceship. Everything is mediocre at best. Uh <laughs> Odyssey Combat there. I don't mind the Odyssey Combat. Not, I like the I like, I like, I like, I like the combat, Odyssey yeah. Combat. I, like I just don't like the like and I like going around and just stealing materials. I do like that. I just don't like that you have to steal sure, so many but... materials and um, it, it's like the process, right? And like, even yeah, with yeah. what's weird, I find is like the Odyssey engineers, like you can bookmark uh, recipes um, and shit with like the, the ship engineers. You can't do that with the Odyssey engineers. So like, I want to know, okay, what do I need to do to get um, this attachment? Like, I can't bookmark that in game. So again, it's sort of like a step backwards there, where you have to go back to third party tools. And by the way, I'm yeah, on a planet with a really brown atmosphere. <laughs> like this is the, it they looks don't like want to work on the previous they, they cut the game in three parts the vanilla the horizon and the odyssey right yeah it seems like they don't want to do anything with a horizon and vanilla anymore other than bug fishes because they want you to buy odyssey is <laughs> yeah yeah wow, this is a cool planet this planet is very reddish brown i really like the atmosphere here that's a kind of cool side benefit yeah, local. Faction Black Widow. The Black Widow faction runs this this planetary base. Huh. That's kind of I mean the Red intimidating. House. <laughs> it's more like the Red House or uh, uh, Red Room, Red Room or Red House. Red Room. Red Room, I guess. Yeah. Because they're saying that bring. They're saying to bring out um, specific missions for, for uh, engineers to get materials and things. It's like, I kind of like that, but I hope they hope just won't be the same missions as normal. Because it's like, I would almost like, m m you know, one of the engineers say, right, you've got to go to this specific place and get this for me. And it's like a one-off thing you do. And so everyone has to do that to unlock that thing. Yes. See, it's like a unique experience sort of thing. Yeah, know? that's more yeah, it doesn't. It doesn't the, always fit into the sort of the free, sort of evolving world of elite where everything's created as you jump mm -hmm. into a system. But it would give you those moments where everyone has unlocked these like, engineers and they had to do that base or yeah. had to do this thing. It'd be quite cool. I think. I've been meaning like, to do. Know. I've been meaning to yeah. do a video on this idea for a while, and I, I just don't know when I'm going to get around it. So I'll just kind of say it like, like mm. for engineers. Uh, yeah. Okay. I want a grade five FSD. Cool then yes, here's a mission that you do, and when you do it, I will give you a grade five FSD. And that mission has like five different steps or levels that you have to go through. Yeah, yeah. That chain yeah. together the different elements of the game. So like go to this facility, meet yeah, with this person. Like a world of right? Oh, 10 years ago. So like a big, a, yeah, big, yeah. a big quest, and like there's multiple points of failure, and if you fail, you have to start it over, but it makes it difficult and skill-based as opposed to, I went out and just spent my time mining these materials right and then yeah, yeah. power play so power play i would do the same thing where, where rather than power play being like deliver these fucking materials that you can pay to get more of i would make it so that like okay like you sign up to this power we have a spy mission for like let's say you're you're signing up to this faction you go okay do you want to do a trade mission okay cool i want you to haul these goods from point a to point b and you're not going to use your ships you're going to use one of the power yeah, yeah. play ships that we're going to supply you with that are like pre-engineered standardized ships that represent that powers kind of like flavor yeah, yeah. right and then it's when you're on experience. those missions yeah and when you're on those missions it creates kind of like um almost like an instance that any opposing so let's say you're on um winters right and you're like i'm gonna do a training mission for winters well let's say another player is working for denton betrayus they can sign up to join uh and sort of like become an antagonist yeah. in that mission so Imagine like yeah, that'd be cool. you're working for Winters, you're hauling um, a trade thing, and another guy working for Winters is your escort, and then a Denton Petraeus player joins that mission as an NPC antagonist, right? And rather than it being mm. like in Super Cruise, let's say it's like there's like two places in an asteroid belt and you have to take it from point A to point B, and at any point an, a, another player faction can come over and take over an antagonist NPC and try and kill you, so that there's actually like a little bit of matchmaking involved in it. Like that's how I think it should work. Anyway, yeah. that's like yeah, the basic cool. summary of my million dollar idea that they can have for free. <laughs> Cause like if they did that, I'd be super impressed and I would play a lot. Um, okay, what the hell am I looking for here again? 
I am looking <laughs> for ceramic yeah, uh, composites. Here we are. Ceramic composites. Only... Okay. No, there's tons here. I will buy all of them. 647. <laughs> there are 8,500 left. Um, I hope this one I get more money for. They also sell nerve agents, and I'm just like... That's such an uncomfortable commodity. <laughs> it's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. You just sell fucking nerve gas on the on the normal. It's not even a black market item, you know. It's like if it's really healthy, good good nerve agents make your nerves better. Like it's good a, for your nerves. Sort of a new, nutritional nerve agent. Yeah, you take these take these nerve agents. It's good for your nerves. <laughs> what? I don't think we'll be bad on it. Yeah. Nothing will bad. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, so I'm going to take a quick, uh, I think it's time for a quick bio break. Um, this is a beautiful uh, environment to have a bio break on. I'm just going to get a nice external shot of the ship. Yeah, that's cool, man. I'm digging this planet. I would like to come here more. <laughs> Alright, that's a beautiful Oh yeah, it's cool. Yeah, it's amazing. It's yeah, dope. That's, cool. I, I, that's what I love about Odyssey, man. Is like These little planets, they give you that taste, and I'm just like, please keep adding more atmospheric planets like this and eventually we yeah, will get yeah. planets so we can go on and smash our t9 into trees you know alien <laughs> yeah. trees and lush jungle planets with flora and fauna and you could go big game hunting as david braben said back in the kickstarter days right um no, we don't mention the kickstarter eh? i know right get they're like well, that, that, was the, the, that was just <laughs> us basically saying what we wanted to do <laughs> yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Well, legit, I'm like, yeah, legit, like, they should add big game hunting so I can go on to, like, cool atmospheric planets and try to hunt down a giant snake, right? Like, why not? Just, yeah, yeah. Like, yeah, yeah. I don't care if it's going to be 10 years from now. Just don't, don't, don't give me the, don't, like, you know, it's either, like, you're still going to eventually do it or, like, you've just given up on that and it's like, fuck it, we're just trying to, like, not have the game crash on us because all of our developers quit. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, I'm gonna take a quick, uh, uh, quick bio race. Let me just throw up the uh, the old bio break thing. I'll just move it away from the sunset, <laughs> so it's not so ugly. Um, yeah. So I'll, I'll be back in about five minutes, uh, and uh, I guess you, you guys uh, can keep talking. I'll leave you guys live okay, so that every, everyone can hear you. If you wanna just fart in. The... I'm gonna get a drink. Oh yeah. Okay. I'll, <laughs> just got... I'll see you guys in about five.
So let's have that 12 million per hour if you do multi hops. Still very profitable. All right, I'm back. For trading, I guess. But if you're not doing trading, if you do mining instead, that is some re really sad number. What's that guy doing up there? This is a beautiful, beautiful planet. Really liking the vibe here. Oh my god, they had a party. Lou, you had a party when I was gone. Why didn't you have a party while I was here? I wasn't invited to a party. <laughs> party time. Oh yeah, and oh, uh, actually, minor faction update. So I got an email from Frontier. Um, the uh, support guy who I'd been emailing with, uh, because like the um, minor faction uh, forum actually broke on the website <laughs> again. Uh, so I wasn't able to uh, reapply, but uh, the guy actually had the courtesy enough to email me and say, hey, the form's back up. So I was like, sweet. So I'll be throwing in that minor faction application again uh, today. And hopefully, hopefully this time we will <laughs> get rejected swiftly and have to do it all over again. But <laughs> uh, if not, um, you know, we'll hopefully I'll have some good news to share on that soon because we are trying to get Dengus investigation into the into the actual game. So that'll be cool. Uh, and let me see here. I'm actually gonna have my, pour myself a little mug of mine. I do a uh, mug of wine. I actually do this weird thing where I drink wine out of mugs because. I, no, no, any wine glasses. But I'm, I'm drinking a lovely wine called Casillero del Diablo, the Devil's Collection. So, devil wine. Um, feels cool and hip. <laughs> Just gonna pour myself a little mug of wine here on a beautiful Saturday afternoon. It is sunset here uh, on the East Coast where I am uh, located, or Eastish Coast. Eastish. But, um,. Yeah, got a beautiful pink sunset out on Earth, and uh, here we got a red sunset on whatever the hell planet we're even on, where Harrington Prospect is located. But, um, oh damn, the party's over. I missed it. Missed it again. Damn it. It's like the damn Pokeroo. Hmm. Not bad. Yeah, I was talking about how much you can profit from the chip. So my, my mental math is 24 million per hour if you assuming the supply is ample and you don't need to do multi hops. Okay. And uh, if you do, must do, I take it half, that will be 12 per hour, still very much profitable for trading. Yeah, that's because not bad. Because I have done some serious trading with my, with one of my previous Python which travels Hundreds of light years yeah. for multi hop. And that was fucking miserable. Yeah, I hear you. Trading yeah, is one of my least, sense. it's one of my least favorite um, parts of the game. I mean, I get that there's some people that really like the trading, but it's not, it's not my cup of tea. Um, I don't like the straight up goods trading. What I do like is the rare goods trading, uh, doing like the rare goods routes. Um, that was really fun. Yeah, if you want to do rare goods, you fight small shit instead. Yeah, you could you could do a nice yeah, rare goods. Yeah, you could do a nice yeah, rare. A you could do um, you could do a nice rare goods uh, route in an ASP uh, with about like you know sixty cargo or something. Do the whole circuit, and that's like good enough for you to load up at each space, right? So, you know, if you're trading in a small or a medium ship, then the rare goods are where it's at, and I. I definitely find that that can be enjoyable because um, you'll run into a lot of other commanders on the rare goods routes and often pirates as well. But the pirates that tend to stop. I have an idea. Uh, it's okay. called good smuggling. What is good smuggling is uh, I paint you a picture. Think uh, there's a ground base, ground settlement needs some, some stuff. Mm -hmm. But they are, they are in a blockade. So just like the lockdown thing. What I told you about in some city where you had to buy a basket of a uh, food with 200 USD or something. They will pay you handsome money, but you have to avoid those bad guys or you shoot them down. Okay. Like, like as called, a mission type, uh, you mean, eh? Like a mission? It's called good, good smuggling. Yes. 
then ideally you will find a uh, find an S which uh, are very good cooling, right? Okay. So you, yeah, if you fly an S with a massive power plant, it's basically nothing burger. It's basically too easy. But if you're not, it'll be a bit difficult. Say you are flying a Cobra, which uh, ship notoriously for very bad heat management. It's it's gonna be very hard for you. Yeah. So the good smuggling co concept I have been thinking about is is built on the premise that the enemy has some serious firepower, i.e. ground ground based anti air stuff. Okay. But you but if you go silent you can undetect it. So the thing about it is uh, tie in with the Odyssey stuff, i.e. land on the planet, right? Yeah, yeah. So you can either land far away, go there on foot, on SRV, or land it straight there with a really good uh, stealth ship like ASP. It's a, a little fun idea I have been thinking about. Yeah, I think smuggling is also a really fun thing in game, but yeah, like the mechanics of it are pretty much like just avoid security, and then when you get to the station that you want to smuggle to, you just go into silent running and boost the mail slot, right? Like there's not much complexity to it, so that definitely is an area of the game where, you know, they could spend some time and really make smuggling a, a, a fun thing. Yeah, you, you will say, well, it's nothing. It's, you don't know what it's purpose for. Well, it has a bigger heatsink he than Explorer. Mm. That's why. Yeah, fair enough. Yeah. I either you make some kind of electronic warfare stuff into the game, like those carrier ships. Uh, I mean, carrier planes like the Boeing E three stuff. Okay. Anti anti submarine stuff, electronic warfare. The, those planes with a big radar disc. Stuff, or make 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 some stealth ships like S Scout. Yeah, I mean the A Scout, um, the Diamondback Scout as well is pretty good with heat management. Uh, Dolphin, Dolphin uh, can also be a pretty good smuggling ship. Oh yeah, oh yeah. I, I mean, I mean DBX, DBS. Yeah, I'm DBS. Scout. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, DBS is a, a pretty good. Like I remember. Um, Specking out a, a DBS with like rail guns, but building it all for like silent running, and that ship is really kind of a cool little. That, that's a cool little build where, you know, the, the yeah. enemy can't target you and you can hit them from far away with precision. Um, like that's definitely like I love the stealth mechanics of silent running, but um, I don't really explore it that much because it does make like the combat really complex. But I'd love I'd love them to expand that part of the game. Yeah, when. When DBSs came out, they're amazing because you would go into a res site and you start getting shot by three DBS, and it's like, well, you couldn't find them. It's really yeah. cool to think, but um, you know, it's really hard to carry that gameplay on. So I thought it was brilliant. And again, the DBS didn't come out a long time after DBS, I think. So I did all my traveling in the south of the um, the bubble, sort of thing, all the bubble, south of the bubble, heart and soul, stuff in DBS, and it had 27 light range jump. You know what I mean? But that yeah. was that was quite good back then but it took me months to go out to um jellyfish and and all that sort of stuff it was a real yeah. epic journey so thing yeah it was cool though well do i do love the dbs because it was it was that era you know what i mean yeah i really, really sit there and look around and go wow yeah i'm really out of black it's quite scary or something which is cool yeah I, I like the diamondback explorer for exploration but the dbs is great mm. for like combat and um, I actually Ooh. don't think I have a DBS on this account because the one that I engineered and kind of spec'd out for combat was on my other account. Um, All right. Which which is like pretty much broke at this point. <laughs> Poor Bradford. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. <laughs> it's just it's it's yeah. honestly it's a lot of work. I know there's some people out there who have like I know like Churgeon has like two, three or four accounts, you know, and it's like yeah, some people have like four accounts, all triple elite and all all four elite on every one or something. And honestly, it's, it's like I get it because yeah. like it, the early yeah, yeah. part of elite is honestly the most fun when you're just getting started. Ooh and mm. everything is scant and you don't have that many resources your jump range isn't great those limitations actually make the gameplay kind of interesting 
and the yeah, feeling yeah. You're, you're progressing your rankings you're getting all you know elite uh, you're not elite in everything so you're getting constant progress and, and unlocking basic permits and stuff like that and just like those early days of elite like the first few months of, of gameplay are just so Amazing. endearing right yeah, yeah. and it's like i, I always yeah. want to go back and do it but I, i'm terrified of i would never clear my save on my main account because that no, terri no. terrifies me to lose all that progress but you can always create a second account and just kind of you know go at it that way yeah, well, I've got a second account, but as soon as I got to engineering, I did a, a bit of it, and I was like, oh, I can't do all that again, because I'd forgotten no. what it's like to get, get the um, high-grade emissions. I remember, like, months of my life just flying over a thousand yeah. light years north of a star looking for high-grade emissions. Oh, you got to, like, yeah, unlock Marco Quentin. Yeah. It's like, okay, so first got to get <laughs> allied with the serious faction, which is just background simulation grind to get the permit. Then I got to, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. do whatever it takes to get him discovered. Then I gotta bring him like twenty five materials or twenty five things <laughs> or whatever, and you can, it's like one of those things where like they only spawn like five at a time. Like I hate the engineers that require rare goods because it just for, like yeah. you can't possibly do it in one go. You have to go back and forth and back and forth. And yeah, back yeah. And forth. They don't they don't say go to three different rares. They want yeah. fourteen or something from something you can't yeah. get it from. And it's like oh, that's just bad yeah. design. Isn't it? it just it's it's yeah. tedious, right? And it's like yeah, that part of the game isn't fun to repeat. Like there are certain elements no. where it's like I wish once you unlocked an engineer, it was just like uh, you could create a new account on the same like account. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And then just like yeah. those engineers would be permanently unlocked. But no, you have to do it all again. But again, the, I, I forget that all your skins as well are, are linked to your accounts. Like, true. Buy yep. skins and things again, you know. Yep. Spent so much on Chrome this Christmas. It's like I oh, know. <laughs> if like I would, even if you could just have like okay, a second commander slot, and one would be like mm. normal, and the other one would be Iron Man mode, and whenever you die, your entire yeah, yeah. progress resets, except for maybe engineers and, and whatever, right? Um, I would mm. love that option because like. I know a couple of people have done it. I can't remember who did an Iron Man um, stream or run, but I remember mm. was it was it Yamix? Was it Scorpius? I can't remember, but someone was doing like yeah, an Iron yeah, Man yeah. run where it's Scorpius. like yeah, when I die, yeah. I die, and and I'll, like I love that idea, yeah. right? Of just like yeah, like 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 pure role play, and just like yeah, if I die, I'm gonna clear my save and start all over. Yeah, I think it was Scorpius who did it. Cool idea. Yeah. Um, well, like the thing we were chatting about Isonone the other day, Isonone's videos were so engaging because every little thing he did was so important, you know? And like you say, I think you get this blasé-ness in the league, you know, oh, I learned 35 million or 120 million. Yeah. And it's it's it gets to a weird point where it means nothing to you, and it's quite strange, isn't it? it and is. it's a shame that it, it, it stops. Well, I suppose, you know, we're expecting years and years of gameplay, which is quite bonkers. But, um, mm -hmm. but you know, there's obviously something about this universe this way of playing that really works because we there's a, a great freedom that we will get in there which is, which is obviously what works with it because we're yeah. we know i love it plays your own trip yeah 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 well, as long as that trail's very meager so <laughs> i am blazing all over my trail <laughs> yeah <laughs> uh and bud been saying he spent tons on chrome and finally got yeah, the yeah. last of his black paint this year yeah, I, I think um, my T9 actually has the black paint job on it right now. <laughs> and Luke says, says Scorp's stream lasted five minutes then. It's fine, <laughs> man. Well, I... I I've, so mean, Luke. I don't know how many times <laughs> he had to restart. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah there, I love some of these paint jobs. And yeah, like the limited edition ones especially, like once you get them on one account, you know, it's like you, you start up a second account and you're like, oh, no, I can't get all these cool-ass skins. Oh shit, oh, hold on, we got Hollow Dots here. We got Commander Russian Man 1996. That sounds like a ganker. Commander is yeah, Zach Pico. By... And Jake and Eagle. I got killed by Mr. AK... AKC something else. I don't know. They got, got in a minute ago. One of these guys is triangular too, which means uh, he's got his hard points out. So we might be yeah, yeah. facing an interdiction on this round. Let's just see how this goes. Oh, yeah. Commander AK Howitzer got me. Um, that's right. He got, right. Oh, wait, he got him. you? And yeah, I got contact he with got him. got right me, now. yeah. Yeah, okay, so he's yeah. definitely one to worry about. And I yeah, got he... someone, it looks like on the radar, I got someone behind me, so. We yeah, how it's be... got me from a long way back, because he flew past me, then turned around, I thought I'll be far enough away, but you obviously got engineered um, things. But uh, yeah, you, there was much. There was no banter. Thing. But it's alright. I've spawned again. Where the hell is Minardi? I can't find you in the. Oh, wait, you're down all the way there. 
You're in solo play. Oh, yeah. I, can't, I can't invite you to the team if you're in solo play. I'm on solo play. No, no, no. Minarni is. Oh, how is he? Oh, He's asking yeah, for I'm, I'm solo. Yeah. I have some network issues. Yeah. yeah. Oh, no, no, no worries. <laughs> if you want to do solo, it's cool. I just can't get you into the wing. It's uh, You have to be in the same instance. Um, but okay, it looks like maybe someone else got interdicted, so that might have put me in the clear. That's luck. But it looks like yeah, yeah the yeah. system's getting more populated, so I don't know. The uh, the uh, the killers have come out to play. It is getting, yeah, yeah, the shots it is getting like, dangus uh, here. Sharks in the water. Yeah, for some reason I, I really think the this industrial look of type nine. I yeah, like yeah. the dashboard yeah. which is seemingly made of unpainted steel panels. Just like they do in Cowboy Bebop. Yeah. Did you watch the uh, the Cowboy Bebop live action thing? Yeah, I'm watching right now. Um, I'm, I just avoid talking about it. I don't want to spoil <laughs> anything. Okay. I enjoyed it. I just Think like a, a lot of people yeah. said they didn't like it, but I liked it. I thought it was great. Um, I have no previous thing, so I also pretty <laughs> really enjoy it. It's yeah. really stylized. I I would say. Yeah, I love the style of it. It's very fun and you know, kind of like a. It's got like a perky, upbeat style, which is cool. Um, and I like I like uh, what's the name John Cho. Yeah, John Cho was fantastic in it. It just like it was it was a, a fun little series, and I'm upset that it didn't get a season two because I would have liked to see where it would go. Yeah, yeah. Um, but you know, it is what it it's is. It's the thing the author passed away a few weeks ago. Uh, so I also heard should go for a new story yeah. instead of a fucking previous. Uh, series and movies. Like, just like an original idea in that universe kind of thing. Yeah. Yeah. And I also the heard, um... based on the... Yeah. Uh, the movie, so... Yeah. There, there is basically no new story arc in the show. Yeah. Which, you know, it's like, yeah, I, I kind of get it, where it's like, yeah, I'd also rather have, like, something completely new. Um... It depends, like, so, there are some things where it's like, okay, like, maybe the story was so good in the game that, like, an adaptation of it in film would be cool, or, you know, it was an old TV show, and it's like, hey, like, you just can't do better than that story, let's recreate it, but you still have to put new stuff in there, because, like, otherwise, what's the point of watching the old one and watching the new one, right? Yeah, but anyway, speaking of animated <laughs> series, I also watched an arcade. Yeah, yeah, I love that. Like that was great. That was a lot of fun. So the thing is, I was pretty... I was past 10. Pretty much against Arcane because I really don't like these Chinese tech giant company stuff. Okay. Like, what, what, like, like, like Riot Games or whatever? You're not, not uh, a fan of them? I played... League of Legends a I'll bit way back when it was in beta. Oh yeah. Contact. I play League of Legends still to this day. I like the little auto chess <laughs> thing they did with uh, I was TFT. Ab Abandon it because there was a period where it has a serious content creep. Uh, I mean content stuff. No yeah. new content, just endless PvP PvP stuff. You are forcing to Match matchmaking with people you don't even know about, and basically you are just losing on a streak. That was a time when I start to reevaluate the value of PvP game, and that was exactly the time they got yeah. bought out by Tencent. Yeah, like yeah. I, I don't know, I, I find I find um, basically a Chinese company now. Yeah. But well, there was a sentence I, I I looked on Twitter, it sums up perfectly. That is Yeah. Arcane is a incredible show. Oh Arcane, I thought the, I mean, the anime great. So I, I I thought it was great. I thought it was like fresh and new, the world building was really interesting, the characters were well done. Yeah. The animation was interesting and unique it's and, and it was just enjoyable. By... Yeah. Uh, no, if you just... uh, if you know something about League of Legends, it will it will 
seriously, uh, it will not be a plus for enjoying the show. If you know nothing about League of Legends and getting to the show, it will be the perfect way to get in. I mean, because I, I actually I disagree with that because I, I I obviously I play League of Legends. I have always enjoyed that form of like it's an interesting different type of game or whatever. I can't remember the name of it. Like there's another one called Dota, but I preferred League of Legends. And there's all these characters in the game, and you know. I never really invested into their backstory. Like I just played the game and enjoyed it. And then because Arcane, I think Arcane. Hold on a second. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Can you let me let me let me finish? Thank you. Um, <laughs> the, the, what I like about it is that like the back the, the characters that I'm familiar with the game, it now provides this backstory, this this world building around them that I was just not familiar with before. So even though I played the game for years and years and years, and then like didn't play it for a while and came back to it. Watching Arcane was like, okay, cool. Now I feel like like there's actually an interesting world that they've created. For someone net new cool. coming in, I, I don't know how someone would would um, never knowing about League of Legends, but like watching the show, um, Abe, they might find it just like an interesting fantasy setting. But I thought it was cool to see, for from my perspective, anyway. So mm, yeah, let me sum sum up for you. You think it's a it's a good fan service? Um, right? Well, I just I. Yeah, I mean, I I wouldn't call it that. Just it's just more that like, okay, you took a game that was just like a bunch of different characters that fight each other on this like one map for like fourteen years, <laughs> um, and you you layered <laughs> yeah. on this story about um, di different characters' motivations, the relationships. Like in the show, the main characters V and and Jinx are sisters, and you knew that from the game, but there was no context around it. There was no real. Uh, reason for them to be sisters yeah, in the game. Yeah, you just, they were just I'm characters. Coming, I didn't know what Vi is. Vi, Vi. Violet. Yeah. Vi. So I didn't know about her because when I left the game, I, there is no Jinx, there's no Vi, there's no nothing. Yeah. Well, they they, they, they have so many characters now that I have but no there's, there's, idea. Uh, <laughs> there, 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 there are little characters though. But the whole play when you in the it's, game who's it would, those little little fucking towers. Like imagine, okay, so League of Legends. If you're playing Elite and you don't know League of Legends, imagine League of Legends was like it's like they're like like imagine Frontier launched uh, Elite and made absolutely no updates for Horizons. The only thing they did is just kept adding ships to the point where there's now a hundred ships in the game. That, <laughs> yeah, that's yeah, kind yeah. of what like it is in League of Legends, where like there's just so many characters that even though I've been back and playing it recently and like enjoying it. I still don't know half the characters that they've added in the last couple of years, what they do or, or what whatever, right? But the lore in the game isn't so important because, like, you just jump in and play, and it's just like a, a, a you know sort of com a team combat. The show, I think, really is interesting because, like, it just it's all lore, and the world is really interesting and different, and you know, it just felt fresh and new. And I thought they just they did a really cool job. Um, with the characters like it just was a really fascinating show to watch so i'm like really looking forward to seeing more of that and yeah like it was kind of neat knowing some of the characters but, oh heimerdinger i remember that fucking anno annoying character yeah, that I've always had to fight, I forget his name. always had to, <laughs> always had to <laughs> fight against him in the game and then finally it's like okay he has a personality in the show and so i thought that was really cool and i'm like i'd love mm. to see more video games like imagine they took a game that like had no story like Pong and like made a show about Pong, you know, <laughs> maybe that's a bad example, <laughs> yeah, but, yeah. but like what's, what's the lore and the world of Pong? Like why do people play Pong? Why is it important? And, uh, I, would actually, know, I would watch that show, it'd be there, amazing. There are emoji movies. The so, oh yeah. God, okay, maybe that's a bad example. <laughs> yeah. What is the lore behind all so, the emojis? thinking about fan service, so you think it's a good fan service mo movie? For you, uh, someone who played the game for a while. Like, I played the game for a while, but I never cared about the, I guess, like, what you say, like, the, the, um, the lore or the background or the characters really meant. Like, you just, I played it and I enjoyed it, but then I think the show, I think, regardless of whether you have played League of Legends or not, like, it's just a good show. It's a cool world, it's cool characters, and I thought it was really well done. Um, you know, as someone so, who's played the game or someone who hasn't played the game, I think there's something to get out of it for people. So let me 
Okay, did you remember the hero misfortune? The what? Right. What was that? The the champion in League Misfortune. Oh, Misfortune. Uh, she's was, like the pirate lady. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Her hair was wasn't red. Was not red. It was blue. I that's what I call the the face the period of pre Tencent and post Tencent. Wait, 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 Are you saying her hair was medium. blue? When was her hair blue? The guy's like Duval? The, 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 the girl hero, a uh, champion, used two knives, two daggers. Right? I always remember she had red hair. <laughs> oh yeah. my god, something bad happened she, in the station. She, she, you see two daggers, <laughs> right? The what? Miss <laughs> Fortune, she... Two daggers, right? No, that's oh, the... uh, misfortune. Has like the two guns and like the pirate hat. Oh, there was a hero <laughs> character. I mean, character. You, it's a, uh, it's female, long hair. Which one? Red. Caitlin has has two daggers. Two daggers. Katarina. <laughs> yeah, Katarina. I, I'm, a, I'm, a, like, I'm a cat main. I play Cat and Jinx in League of Legends. Those are my two favorite characters. Yeah. Because Cat, cat is her like the assassin character. For her, well, okay, but here's and, the thing. Like, there are different skins, and so like, I know like like Cat. One of her skins, she has blue yeah. hair. One of her skins, she has red okay, hair. Okay. And I, I, I can say like like a show if they're gonna interpret like they might take a different version of a character, and I'm fine with that kind of stuff. Like to me, fan service is not like doing things exactly as it was but just like staying true to the spirit of like the character right like what they meant or what their motivation was or yes you know. that's pre exactly my point and what i'm saying is before tencent everything in legal legend looks fucking hideous including that <laughs> uh that hero that uh that alchemist zombie stuff they, that he, he could throw people over his shoulder or something. Yeah, yeah. Hideous! It, remember that fucking exploding zombie Sion? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Fucking yeah. hideous. Oh, yeah. <laughs> but after that, that everything is good. Looking good. Looking too good. So you're saying like everything is like idealized, like everything is too beautiful, too. Like every character has to be sexy. It almost looking like a Japanese hentai game with that. Yeah, yeah. That uh, fox chick or something. Yeah, yeah. No, I, I get it. It's, it's, it's like, like it's uh, like if they gave like Timo tits or something like that, it would be like, whoa, what are we doing here, guys? <laughs> like, uh, almost, like overly sexualized object yeah. of some kind of an anime waifu pillow. I think that's like that's, that's like that's too, like that's a problem that is just that that's just a problem that like. Everything, TV, movies, video games, like everything has to be like idealized, and everyone has to be like this good-looking, ideal sort of like. No, character, I. Right? What, what I mean is, pre Tencent, League of Legends is a pile of crap. After Tencent, <laughs> it's almost like a soulless, beautiful husk. Okay. <laughs> a soulless, beautiful husk. Can I quote you that's on that? Because I, I think that's the greatest <laughs> thing I've ever. A soulless, beautiful yeah. husk. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's almost like those, you know, those mm. Chinese-made hentai games on on Steam, right? Like they honeypot? all have beautiful girls, but they are all just pictures. There is no mm. no no substance to them. We, we need the, to bring the ugly. The we need to bring the ugly back to the back to the online gaming industry. Yeah, yeah. Whatever happened to good old ugly it's, characters? It's not about ugly or not. It's about <laughs> They Riot game lost itself. Arcane, there's a there's a one one liner review of, of Arcane is what what League of Legends needs is not Riot game, it's Arcane. I it's probably it's the original Riot Riot stuff. Riot people let, letting the TV production company doing its thing as yeah. few Tencent influence as possible. 
Well, I mean, look, that is my point. Tencent invested in Frontier, and I'll tell you, I've seen some of the ugliest people as Hollow Me's running around the galaxy. Uh, especially them NPCs with those one. screwed up faces, you know. Tencent is known for uh, <laughs> diverse investment, right? Because mm -hmm. everything in China is blown, blown to Like, isn't Tencent's <laughs> idea is like they want to own 10% of everything? Like, is that kind of like in the name? Yeah. Mm. It's a smart strategy but, if you think about it. But they are it. also basically dominate how basically have absolute say about how League of Legends be becoming right. right? Mm. You, you you can you can feel it's based fundamentally just a Chinese game with all this exploited stuff. Mm -hmm. Also, why it doesn't have a replay system for so many years, right? It's, a, it's amazing to me that like literally it's been the same map like you play on the same map for like since the beginning of League of Legends they have not like they've updated the God, map they've crazy, tweaked it but it's like the it's like but think about it the game of chess or checkers has been the same board yeah, yeah. forever yeah, they never yeah. you don't change the board you know what I mean so I'm like that's kind of neat and kind of not but uh, League of Legends like they've <laughs> added new game modes so like you can play on a different map in a different mode. Um, I really like the auto chess thing that they did recently, so it's like this thing called um, TFT, I don't know what that stands for, but you like, it's just team like... Team Fight Tactics. Team Fight Tactics, okay. And it's like, it's a completely different game within the game, but it's something different, and so there's some like variety within that game itself. And hey, the game is free to play, so that's kind of cool, um, that anyone can just jump in, like you don't need to buy it to get um, started, right? Yeah. I'm just thinking that so the whole hands and influence thing. Mm -hmm. I'm I'm watching almost I'm almost finished the show, show right now on episode seven or AI. I do not remember. It it's, it strikes me as it's a good show. It's not those happy Chinese stuff. It's it's, it's fun it and real. It's fun and real. And, and the only thing that bothered me about it was like Imagine Dragons does the the theme song and then they like cameo <laughs> in the show, like the band is like in the show and I'm like that's kind of cool, but it's also like a little bit like way um, too much because they're in like multiple no, episodes. Band, <laughs> yeah, yeah. You yeah. To be honest, I don't really it. like the theme song. To be honest. It's okay. Absolutely. I'm not a I'm not a I'm not a huge fan of the band, but like that's fine. It's like I I it that feels band like has a image of yeah. The band has a really nose frat boy stuff. It just like I, mean, I listen to the theme song and I'm like you know like, it feels like, like hey hey like, uh pop uh half naked on the on the concert right yeah. I'm just gonna say, like, it feels like uh, the music is meant for like people younger than I am, and hey, if they <laughs> like it, that's cool. Uh, I really don't like the one of those poppy music in the in the show, but the music in this show was yeah, Chef Kiss, all right? Just Chef Kiss. Everything in this show is a breath of fresh air. I think it was good. I really, I enjoyed it, and I do recommend it. If you like, uh, you know, fantasy, I, I it's mean, definitely different, and it do, it doesn't hit like the same the fantasy. Thing. It doesn't hit the same fantasy tropes that like every other fantasy thing. Like a friend of mine was like, "Oh, check out the Wheel of Time," and I watched the Wheel of Time, and it was okay. Um, like I guess, like yeah, if, I if watched the Wheel of Time first episode. Came mm -hmm. in, and I was enough of this shit. If you were a fan of the book and looking for an adaptation, I'm sure it's great. Uh, for me, I'm like, okay, I didn't really know the books, but I watched it, and I'm kind of like, okay, I watched the full season, but I felt it was, like, all the same sort of fantasy tropes. Like, I'm like, I'd rather just watch Lord of the Rings again, because it's, like, all the same shit, right? There but, was a review online that said the Wheel of Time is full of Lord of the Rings. Yeah, 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 female, the world, uh, matriarchy, yeah, so what? Thing, thing, I was, thing, I was just thing. more like, like, like you know, it's like Lord of the Rings is about like this wizard that pulls together a bunch of people, and you know, like, there's these prophecies and stuff, and it's all the kind of stuff that you're gonna see like in every fantasy novel, right? Whereas I, I'm like, a show like Arcane is still like a fantasy show, but it had a really unique setting. I liked the world building, the factions within the world. 
And it all felt very, like, even though I've been familiar with the game, it all felt very fresh and new. And I thought that was cool. Um, you know, um, and I know they're making, uh, I heard recently that they are making a Fallout show with Amazon. And Fallout to me is like a beloved, beloved game franchise and a beloved world. And yeah, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm not looking good for this one because... I'm really nervous. Okay, you look, <laughs> you look the expense, expense, right? Uh, there was a sexual scandal out, out there and the show is now... You're going, talking about the, the expense. The yeah. Yeah, I, they basically cancel the show because story-wise is already already catching on and but i think mostly it's because the scandal thing is well just, what, what happened there was that one of the actors had kind of like a you know outside of the show uh, you know did a bad thing and they, they wrote, so, and so they wrote the character out of the show by killing him off in kind of an unceremonious way and unfortunately like despite what the actor did outside the show which honestly i didn't even look into that much i really liked that character on the show and so that was kind of a heartbreak um because like you know again it's like oh that was one of my favorite characters and the way that they wrote him off was like it just felt like they kind of just, just did it in whatever way and it, it, it could have been done better I don't think that's why the show is getting cancelled, I think it's just probably expensive to produce. Um, from what I understand, this is the last season, and there are, like, I think two other books that they could cover, but I haven't read the books, and I don't know, you know, if, uh, like, if there's a lot more integral plot yet to come, but to me, I feel like The Expanse really peaked around season two. <laughs> um, like, I've always enjoyed it, I still do enjoy it, but, like, Season two and maybe three were the best that that show was ever going to be. Um, even this last season, it's okay. I still really enjoy it, but I'm kind of like ready to move on as well. So I, I think it's like I don't think the cancellation of the show had anything to do with the scandal. Like they wrote that character off to respond to that kind of thing. Um, and then this last season, like it's been interesting, but like. I don't know, Tom. You you, you, you watched the Expanse? How far are you into the Expanse? I watched the first season, and I think I started watching the second one and got a bit bored because I love I love sci-fi books. It felt like a sci-fi book rather than a series to me. Mm. So I, I kind of got bored with it, really, which is a bit annoying. I liked. I mean, I love the whole premise and stuff, and it's great to have that kind of thing going on. But yeah, I didn't get mm. totally hooked to it. Surprise me. The Expanse is like the closest thing to Elite Dangerous, the show that we have, right? Like the yeah. realistic physics, yeah. the way that the the world building and that kind of works. I do love like the factions, like the Belters versus the Martians versus yeah, the yeah. Earthers. Yeah, so cool stuff. I really love the Belters too, and this season has been very focused on the Belters. Um, uh, I'll right, say this: cool. that, that they're, they're even though I feel like it peaked in like season two, season three. Not this season, but the last season, there was this crazy big event that was really well right. done, really well handled, and I'm like, oh man, like this show still does uh, sci-fi in a vein that I really want to see, but I feel like, cool. I think like, okay, cut it off now, like I feel like this late, latest season, like the main actor who plays James Holden, he feels oh. like, I don't know, I don't know if he's like, I don't know if it's tired. like a character thing, he feels <laughs> tired, like he definitely yeah, seems yeah. like... He's just like standing around being like with a cup of coffee being like, mm, yeah, okay, whatever. And I'm like, is that, is that an actor <laughs> decision? Does he have health issues? Like, I'm kind of worried about it. <laughs> he seems also very yeah, yeah. skinny. And I don't know if that's like, he's doing this for the show or, or what, but I don't know. I'm like, yeah, yeah. I, I'm finding like, I really felt like the first two or three seasons um, were my the favorite. Stuff. Yeah. And, and yeah. also Thomas Jane was in them. And I love Thomas Jane as an actor. Tom Jane is awesome. Yeah, he's cool. Anything yeah, Tom Jane's in, I will watch. Um, oh no, Minerni's the internet broke. That's probably because but the he, fact you were probably dissing on Tencent, and then Tencent uh, reached into the internet <laughs> machine and cut you off. Um, My brother's been watching Foundation, which you said you would enjoy as well. I did, I did. It was fun. It, it's not like the yeah. best sci-fi show ever, but I really enjoyed it. Yeah. Uh, have yeah, you yeah. been watching it too, or, or you're... Uh, no, I've not on Rapid TV yet. But um, yeah, I just, I just, I just it, it sounds interesting. Like, what, what does your brother think of it? Does he like it? 
He likes it, yeah, because he's a proper old sci-fi heads up book reader right. sort of thing, so, yeah, which is cool. Lee, we're Lee, both saying, we're, Lee Pace is we're in reading, that one. um, oh yeah, because they were, Ian, Ian M. Banks books, they were yeah. developing, Amazon were developing Conserve Phlebas, but they dropped it, which is like, oh no. Uh, but we've both been reading this guy called Neil Asher, who does really good similar stuff to the Ian M. Banks, I think, this uh, massive sort of futuristic sort of uh, culture thing. And it's like, oh, I, just, I just want that in, you know, to be able to watch an endless series of that sort of stuff would be amazing. Mm -hmm. But again, it's like every every two seconds would be the budget of a Marvel film, I imagine. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 No, from Foundations I thought was really good hard sci-fi. Like, there's really heady, lofty concepts in there. Um, yeah, Pete, yeah. Pete Pace, I think, is a phenomenal actor. I think that's his name. Um, the guy who plays, like, again, you, you, you might know him from, as, like, Ronin from uh, oh, yeah, yeah. The Galaxy. Um, he was yeah. in that show about the computer shit. What was it called? Um, with Mackenzie Davis. Uh, but he's, he's one of those actors where he, the actor just has such gravitas and intensity. Um, yeah, and, yeah. And, and I, I think he's nowhere better than this show. Like, I think he's just so fucking um, nails the, like, emperor, um, uh, galactic emperor sort of personality. Um, yeah. And then just like, like I think the problem with it that I had is just like it's kind of all over the place. Like there's a bunch of stories going on, and they don't really connect until kind of the end of the season. And then you get to the end of the season, and you're like, oh, I guess, I guess it'll get really good <laughs> yeah. in season two. <laughs> yeah, yeah, um, that's the more thing. Like the first season's all about making you buy the second season. So I don't know. Yeah, there's an amazing. That, yeah, the, I, I don't, I don't want to spoil anything, but there's like some amazing events that happen mm. the mid season. Uh, from a special effects perspective that I thought blew me away. It was really cool. Cool. Um, but yeah, yeah. other than that, I think what, what is interesting about the show is a lot of the concepts. Um, right. I'm not too invested in the characters other than that Emperor. Um, but again, like, so the cool. old the old hard sci-fi was more about the concepts and less about the characters. Or again, exactly. it would be like, here's 7,000 years of a, of a civilization to things. So it's really like the Dune style thing where you're like, hey, you know, I've just got into this character and they've moved on a few thousand years. Think. But that was a, quite a cool thing of the era, I think, of these well, hard sci-fi stories. Well, that's the thing with Foundation is like, I think that's why people said it was like, uh, they couldn't adapt it because it takes place over like a span of thousands of years. It's very similar to Dune in that way where you know yeah, yeah. Like, like book one is like these characters and then book two is like a completely different set of characters 10,000 years later <laughs> but it kind of yeah, yeah. but that's what uh -huh. I love about it because that shows you like the macro scale of society like you know you're not looking at yeah, one yeah. person's story and journey you're looking at the journey of humanity into the future yeah totally that's yeah, yeah. pretty yeah. cool that oh no cool, but Arnie's uh, it's raining and his internet's down oh no Oh no! You've been, uh, you've been. Uh, so you didn't just piss off Tencent. You pissed off the government because they control the weather. Um, <laughs> <laughs> next thing you know, you'll have a bird knocking on your door. Um, <laughs> you've gone, those birds aren't real, which is my favorite right. fake conspiracy right now. I can't, I, <laughs> well, that's not real. Time. Birds aren't real. I saw a, a clip the other day, and it's like one of the guys who's like, a, I guess, a leader in the. I, I assume it's a fake conspiracy, but. Who knows? Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, who he, knows? Was do, he was doing like some news interview, and he was drinking a glass of milk during the news interview, and then like spat it up and started coughing and choking. And I think he was trolling the newscasters. I died laughing, right. and I'm just like, yeah. please, can we like come up with more fake conspiracies and, then, <laughs> yeah. and then get the news media to believe it's real? The problem with that is that eventually there's going to be actually people that do believe in it. <laughs> Yeah, that's the thing. Yeah, I know you'll be in a pub and someone will go, I oh, you know this, and they'll tell you. But like, no, yeah. that's totally fake. But they'll they'll have the belief on that, which is a scary bit. Yeah, if you go around <laughs> telling enough people that Nicolas Cage is actually an alien from the planet Venus, eventually someone yeah, yeah, will yeah. believe it. Like, you know. Yeah. They'll make it into a Netflix series as well. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> actually, I could see that could be plausible. Mm. I could see Nick Cage being <laughs> turning out to actually be an alien. <laughs> Yeah, he's a an intense man, isn't he? Like, it grabs your attention. I was watching um, Fistful of Dollars and a few dollars more on the weekend, yeah. and the, the the guy in there, the sort of kind of the baddie guy, who's like a the Italian actor. He's just such a great, over the top, passionate kind of baddie. It's ah, like, oh, I've really missed that character. Way I think he's got so complex now, which is cool. Yeah. But he's just like a a real old fashioned, like yeah, I'm 
he's driven mad by his evil thing. So that's just crazy. I don't know, yeah. It's of, its, of its era, but it's quite cool to watch. It's so hard to write a good bad guy, because, like, what, what's a real bad guy motivation, yeah. right? It, but then it's like, yeah. I've, I've been watching a lot of videos that just, like, are dark mysteries and true crime and stuff like that. And then you realize, like, yeah. you know, uh, uh, there's a lot of stranger than fiction stuff out there where there's, like, some real. Really is. Fucked yeah. up people. Um, yeah, totally. Yeah, like, yeah. that make Bond villains look fucking realistic, right? Oh, yeah, totally. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, see, Lute is like, yeah. Nick Cage is not from Venus? See, we already have our first <laughs> believer. We're going to start a cult yeah. of uh, conspiracy about Nick Cage being an alien from Venus. Yeah. We're doing it. I think we should get He's got to be put into Raxler. I think Nick Cage should have the voice of Raxler. Oh, my God. Great, the... Can you imagine <laughs> if it's like, yeah, Raxler exists and it's not a planet, it's a person, and it's Nicolas Cage, and he's an immortal, <laughs> and they actually have Nicolas yeah. Cage like, voice act and meet you in the game. <laughs> Damn. Yeah. Be great. It's kind of like random stuff. Oh, wow, this is cool. I mean, the Frontier people know Jeff Goldblum because he does voice acting for the Jurassic Park. Yeah. Movie, so it's like, it's believable. Yeah, he's quite cool, though. Yeah, yeah. Jared Leto or Zuck could be aliens. I think Zuck, Zuck is not an alien. He's a robot. He's like a an AI yeah, yeah. Uh, construct. And Jared Leto, I don't know if I like him. <laughs> I like him in some movies. I liked him in Requiem for a Dream. Um, he was in the Blade Runner 2049. I kind of thought he was okay there, but I'm not a huge, huge fan of his. He's okay. I want to see him in the. What is he? What is he in that? Um, replace like a big fat dude. Uh, in the oh, Gucci, no, no. Gucci movie, the Gucci, Gucci, oh, right. the Gucci. No, I don't know. I think he was in, like, like he plays like movie. the Gucci dude in the Gucci movie, and he's like a big fat dude. Oh. All right. I'm like, I like I like when actors do yeah. I like when actors do like transformative roles, you know, like when they're yeah. like yeah. like Christian Bale as Dick Cheney. Yeah, yeah, totally. It's been crazy. I've been watching loads of different series lately. I um, keep going like most of the main actors are English, but they're all like got American accents in the films. Mm -hmm. And then you see the makeup, and it really freaks me out. Like, are, they, are, we, are we selling them cheap actors or something? So I was going, <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, it's like, it's like when people found out that Hugh Laurie was British and they lost their minds. It's like, <laughs> yeah. It's like, wait, what? And he was in, there like a, in a comedy act for ages over here. He was like a sort of a posh yeah. comedy actor. Quite good. And suddenly he's like this famous actor. It's like, whoa. Well, it's, I, I think yeah. it's always funnier when, when it's like Americans doing the Brit accent. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, I might. It was well, just crazy it's, it's a, There's so many different types of British accents, right? I think I guess there's, there equally, is, yeah. there's equally as many like American dialects or whatever, but... It's always fun. Yeah, I always love to see actors do it, but sometimes it's just like it's so bad that <laughs> if you actually like know, know the accent. In, in Britain, if there's another accent every 500 meters, you can kind yeah, of yeah, tell yeah. where someone's. Oh, you're from over the hill. Yeah, you've got a little, uh, you're yeah. from 6th Street. <laughs> you got a 6th yeah, yeah. Street accent. You're from Lancashire, uh, the, 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 yeah. the, the Quaddle Ditch district. The Dolly Hill. Like imagine it's the same all over Europe because it's such old countries, I think. Mm. So they just have that, that ancientness to them. <clears throat> and again, we like to pretend we're clever, so we have more accents. <laughs> <laughs> but it's been cool. So, um, my wife saw the uh, who's he called? Uh, Sherlock Holmes guy, Benedict um, Cumberbatch. Yeah, or? that's the guy. The name I never remember his name. Yeah, he was in that that um, American film at the moment where he's like a real power of the dog. Mm. And she was saying that's a really good film, so I think so. Yeah. Okay. Let's watch that back again. But another, another, you know, like a more of a, a he changes personality and stuff to get his role across. And I, right. I like actors do that. That's what acting's about, isn't it, really? Well, I mean, this is the thing, right? Is is there are some actors that I think just like they never play a character that's too far from themselves, but that works yeah. for them. And then you have other yeah, actors yeah. like a Gary Oldman who are just like yeah, yeah. every single movie they're completely different and transformative, right? And I think like but, I'm always but, more impressed. Believable. I'm always more impressed by those yeah. actors that are like the 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 malleable chameleons. Um, yeah, like yeah. Nick Nick Cage is a great example of like Nick Cage is always a version of Nick Cage in every movie he's in. <laughs> yeah, he right? is. yeah, but yeah, yeah. He, there can be different sides to Nick Cage, but he's always kind of Nick Cage. But hey. That fucking works, right? Versus, yeah, 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 totally. You know, Gary yeah, yeah. Oldman, it, like he'll be different in each movie, but you know, it's yeah, um, yeah. 
Yeah. yeah, to me, I think those are like the real true actors and the ones that can be transformative, but I don't think you need to be a transformative actor to be a good actor, right? You know, it's like... Um, no. Uh, I, think, I think probably a lot of actors can do that, but I don't know if the, Amer the American cinema are like, no, we like you to be this guy because that's who we're used to. So you come through telly as this guy and that's, yeah. that's who we expect to see something. Whereas maybe other cultures have a more... Like you know, well, interesting. That's very interesting. I've seen different things because they have more varied TV careers. Maybe I don't know. Right. I well, don't. It's know. like like Brad yeah. Pitt. Brad Pitt is someone I would consider a good actor, right? Yeah, and, yeah. And he will be different. Like if you see him in Twelve Monkeys or you see him in Seven, he's going to be yeah. acting differently, but still like like it's kind of it's Brad Pitt. You know what I mean? He's not like. <laughs> Transforming yeah, yeah. It's not into a freak you out. Yeah, you you yeah. Re watch Burn After Reading. You watch Twelve Monkeys. It's like it's still Brad Pitt, but he is acting, and and there is a difference between the characters. But it's not like, you know, if you go from Gary Oldman in uh, what, was it Leo the Professional or whatever? What's that one where he's like everything? Um, you know, oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. Versus like you know, uh, I'm trying to think of another Gary Oldman movie. Like I was even just thinking like one of the Batman movies where he plays like Commissioner Gordon. Yeah. Like it's a very different yeah. Gary Oldman. Oh, I got you. Yeah, yeah. But you know, it's again. That's what I say. Like, like you know, like it, it, I think acting is just like you know when you are watching the movie, do you buy that this person is that character? Like, is it realistic? Right. Um, a good yeah, example totally. of a yeah. terrible actor would be Steven Seagal in pretty much any fucking Steven Seagal movie, <laughs> where you're like, yeah. you're like, I do not buy what? that this guy is a special forces guy. He's number one, he's way too fat. Number two, he's just whispering all the time. <laughs> he can't yeah, hold yeah. a gun properly, like you know. Um, and, and John Claude Van Damme oh. is what, what where sometimes I'm, I believe it. Like I, I don't know if you saw JCVD, yeah. but I think that's a brilliant fucking movie. It's the best John Claude Van Damme movie there is. No, I've not seen it. Yeah, that sounds cool. It's like a French mm -hmm. art film. Like, okay, I will tell you the, the plot of JCVD <laughs> is John Claude Van yeah. Damme plays John Claude Van Damme, but like a fictionalized version of himself. He's going through um, a child custody, Leon, yeah. child custody divorce case, and he just happens to walk into a bank, and there's a right. hostage situation, and he gets taken as a hostage. So the actor John Claude Van Damme is now in like a bank hostage situation. Mm. Um, but it's phenomenal. It really is phenomenal. Um, it's, cool. He delivers one of the greatest monologues ever in film history. It's actually deeply emotional and personal. All and, right, wow. And it's like, yeah, like this guy can actually fucking act if you put him in the right setting, right? Yeah, and, never, and, and never after, had for. And, and and you you know, twenty years post like cocaine binged, muscle bound eighties <laughs> testosterone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So it's like, yeah. You know, but I, I, yeah, and to anyone out there watching, I would say watch JCVD. It is a fantastic, fantastic movie. And then if you like cool, that yeah. and you want something a little more campy, he did an Amazon series <laughs> called Jean Claude Van Johnson. And it's also, <laughs> it, it, that one felt more like, oh, wow, JCVD really worked well. Let's try to cash out on that. Um, well, I see, yeah. The plot to that series is that uh, it's kind of retroactively playing with history, saying that. Jean Claude Van Damme is a film actor, but he was actually the entire time he was making films, he was actually a secret CIA operative. And the Jean Claude, <laughs> the shitty Jean Claude Van Damme movies were all cover stories, so they could get the actor uh, Jean Claude Van Damme into a country so he could com perform missions. <laughs> wow, well, that's cool, man! Isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's that's having brilliant. he's having a lot of fun being Quite. meta about his career now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, weird, creating weird conspiracy theories about yourself in a series. That's that's, that's really quite cool. It's kind of fun. It's, yeah, a, yeah. it's a fun take. Yeah, I, think, yeah. I think JCVD is the version that I like better because it's like subtle and, and well done versus like Jean Claude yeah, yeah. Van, uh, Van Johnson is kind of like, like it's campy and fun, but um, I recommend them both. Um, but yeah, yeah let's, let's see where we are. So, so we just got back. We just gave our last haul. So we are at. 2700 units collected and we have made it to the top 75% which means it hey. the eagle ends and we're here yay we got the new FSDs um, <laughs> excellent top 50% would be about 4500 according to Inara if that's accurate so if I wanted to like secure my 75 I'd probably do another you know 5 or 6 runs or whatever maybe I'll do that yeah, later yeah. but I think that's enough for this like that's enough for this stream we got to what we needed to do We've done some yeah, damn yeah. good, damn fine hauling today. Um, we're kind of. He in didn't a... die, did you, dude? Holy shit! He didn't. 
You wow. didn't die I got, at all. I got three. Got I got F three. I got three Fs from loot, and I didn't even die once. They're saved up. You know what no, I mean? yeah, yeah. yeah, they're banked. Yeah, we're <laughs> gonna put those put those Fs in the bank in the F bank. Um, yeah, yeah. Holy it's shit. a whole new you. But look at this community <laughs> goal in open in a type nine, and I was prepared to be ganked a couple times, but hey, it worked out. Um, yeah, yeah. Awesome. Cool. I'm pretty happy about that actually. I didn't even think about that. I didn't. I didn't even think about that. Yeah, I didn't even die. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're up, you're up in money today. I mean, you actually have money in the bank Let more see, than when you start the stream. <laughs> uh, oh my god, you're right. I am at 364 million. So st it, it hasn't That's been cool. insanely profitable. Like, and I don't it's know. If, something. I mean, if I wanted to make profit, I guess mining would be the thing to do, or bounty hunting if I want to do fun. I was actually good at thinking about doing bounty hunting, mm. but then I saw this community goal, I saw the FSDs, and I'm like, I gotta have my hands on that. that that's, it's yeah, too yeah, good it's to pass cool, like. Yeah, I mean, like. Monetary reward aside, a double engineered FSD. Mm, give me some yeah. of that sugar, baby. Um, so I'm, I'm happy with that. Um, and, you know, got some galactic reputation with a brewery company. So that's cool. Uh, you failed at Fs. Well, I failed I failed <laughs> at Fs. Yes. Okay. I uh, failed yeah. at Fs, but that's like, that's like I failed to not succeed. So I'm going to be, like, happy with that. <laughs> Yeah. Um, but yeah, I guess I'll call it time there. We've been doing about three hours, so thank you guys for um, joining both in the chat in the comments and Tagoso and uh, Minarni. Hopefully, your uh, internet and weather will improve, and uh, uh, you don't get uh, um, uh, ten cent assassins sent after you. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, um, yeah, no, thanks guys for joining, and I'll, I'll do another stream next Saturday. What I'm thinking about doing, and I'm not sure yet, is I, I'm writing my next Dangus 007 episode. Um, and uh, one of it calls for like uh, basically like an SRV chase uh, where a ship is like trying to shoot down an SRV. So might do that next week, but uh, it will depend on the script being done and then just having like the location found and everything. Um, right. But yeah. if, if not, we can do bounty hunting and do that the week after. I'm not still uh, sure yet, but whatever we do, it'll be fun. It'll be fun and it'll be dangus. Those are the two things you can uh, you can put your money in the bank of Zeance for. <laughs> <laughs> um and uh yeah then I'll, hopefully i don't know we'll see if i have a faction update too that's the other thing i'm looking forward to is oh um, yeah finally getting Degas investigations into the game um whatever system we land in who knows but um i'll submit that today and honestly the last times i got the rejections it was within a week so maybe i'll have some news on that um if not, yeah. then, then... Fingers, fingers crossed. I mean. Exactly. And if not, blame Frontier. Yeah. Or blame Scorpius. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. Bring them down. <laughs> yeah. We've been waiting. Yeah. 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 But I hope you guys enjoy uh, the rest of your Saturday. Um, go out there, be dangus, get some credits. Join the community goal. This is a really good one. So if you guys are watching, um, you know, even just get in there to seventy five percent. It only took us about three hours of hauling and we didn't even die. Yeah. You could do this in solo mode with like a full cutter Watch. with like just yeah, yeah. Bays Watch a nice get... movie. Exactly. Great. Put on a movie and uh, or or listen to go on to Coso SoundCloud, which you can find the link of in the description. Put on some <laughs> awesome elite tunes and uh, just you know, like zone out and do some spaceship, man. I mean that's what that's what we're all, we're all about. <laughs> Or, or, and then, you know, in a week or two, we'll have some James Webb uh, space pornography to, to gawk over, right? So, <laughs> yeah. That's going to be super cool. But, um, you know, I will say uh, a, a big, big old F for all you folks out there. <laughs> uh, F for respect, of course. And I'll see you all uh, on the next <laughs> Dangus uh, next week. I'm ready. Well, seven. Bye-bye. Oh, seven.